Krakoom! A peal of thunder echoes the last flash of lightning in this terrible hellish wood. The horse beneath you rears up. <laughs> Rain stings your eyes and goes in rivulets down your worried face. You struggle to calm the steed between your knees just as you try to steady your own shock. An addled mind, the flash illumes the trees, gnarled branches swaying wildly in the wind, glistening mud from the fast flooding trail, the wide eyed beast beneath you, and whoop! The wind is knocked out of you as you fall into the gushing muck. <laughs> The horse's feet sound in the distance as it flees away. And then a whinny of terror, <laughs> cut short by a sickening snap, like the mighty bough of an ancient oak suddenly rent from its long home. Another flash, and you see the truth. Your horse's head dangling, rivulets of blood matting it. And there behind it, the giant maw of its hunter. Your heart gives its last desperate yelp as you behold the scene. Teeth the size of your forearms, eyes upon eyes upon eyes on top of its head. Yea, you have seen this, the storm hunt triumphant of hell's worst and most terrible hunter. It is a happy Cthulhu. Welcome to Happy Chthonian. I'm Christoph, uh, and this is session three of our ongoing Ultraviolet Grasslands campaign. It's also a special one. It's kind of a standalone because it's part one of a dungeon crawl. Yay! A dungeon crawl through Glitch Spire. Uh, this little baby, one page dungeon, system neutral, should work with anything. It's kind of set in the Ultraviolet Grasslands, so best if you go there, but. Could go anywhere, especially in Troika, I think. Uh, there will be links above and below and all around for where you can get it. Probably a little video of me talking about it I'll also do. Yeah, it'll be pay what you want on itch.io. Uh, so yeah, this session, the party has been going from civilization into the wilds. Now they're kind of going back towards civilization with a patron who wants them to clear out this tower. Perfect, classic dungeon with a few weird, wacky, psychic kind of twists. Uh, this is part one. We're going to get together in the next couple of weeks to play through part two. And then I'll throw that on here as well. I think that constitutes an adequate video introduction. And so, without further ado, video. All right. Last time on Ultraviolet Grasslands Vol Z. The party, after making their way from civilization to the high road in the low, went to the pot shard crater and met up with crazy Duke Rouge Lombardo and his entourage, his girlfriend and bodyguard, Rambatam. Just in time. And his Hello. magicians, Horny and Horny. Hey, hey. Right. what's up? <laughs> perfect timing. Thank you. Almost perfect timing. We just <laughs> after, started. after meeting with the Duke at the pot shard crater, they went to the porcelain citadel where parties were had, experience points earned, debts gained, and belongings robbed. <laughs> they then made their way to the Step of the Lime Nomads in the employ of the Duke Rouge Lombardo, uh, helping bring him to his inheritance, an ancient tower bequeathed to him by his late great uncle. Uh, along the way, they ended a 250-year-long feud between the bee druids and the lime nomads of the unbroken patriarch, and uh, <laughs> epic. took the head off of a giant megapede and replaced it with a normal-sized camel head, so we now have a much larger beast of burden. It's all the time. Never stops hitting. Never stops hitting. How you little face? Your big body. <laughs> Twice. Uh -huh. They stand, they uh, stand now approaching the uh, tower, which appears to be made of, it's like someone took bone and obsidian and melted both down into liquid form and then turned them into an alloy and then made a tower out of it. Is it, like, Go is it like marbled or is it one solid? Marbled. Okay, great question. Well, um, here, you see a 
giant spider web, and in it, kind of a Scorpion King style spider person, uh, kind of lounging. <laughs> Just hanging. <laughs> <Just lounging. laughs> uh, you see a person at a little sad cooking fire, maybe, <laughs> alone except for two donkeys. Uh, what do you look like? What do they see as they approach? The latest. First, extremely handsome, first of all. But I, my teeth are falling out, and I have very smooth skin that's becoming more and more translucent. Logistics. Could you say that again? Also very... So, translucent skin? Yes. So I'm 6'10". Thank you. So tall and handsome. And... Uh, <laughs> But my teeth are falling out, and my skin is like, like what, wait, what's it say? Yeah. Becoming waxy and waxy. Yes, yes. When you yes. say 6'10", do you mean like a titan, or like itty bitty spider arms? Maybe 6'10 is too tall, 6'5". But, like, <laughs> like, you know, like Chad is here. <laughs> okay. Like Ultra Chad. Mm -hmm. That's what oh, you right. should imagine. Or you can just look at me. How does... Uh, <laughs> Can we also have a chat? Loyalty, loyalty, loyalty as an aspiring um, normal mafia thug Chad um, <laughs> is just gonna stare for a little while and appreciate this prime specimen. Oh, and my name is Chad. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just in case you didn't get that, that didn't penetrate. Uh, your uh, grandmother peeks into your, your loyalty and says, he's desperate. You could use him. <laughs> How can someone like that be desperate? Joyce. He's got to have people lining up to send him on jobs. <laughs> look at I mean, look at him. <laughs> but look at the donkeys. <laughs> you have two donkeys with you. He's all alone. I'm out of supplies. Yeah, he's got a Robotech grandma. So, oh, okay. I yeah. So you see. Anything. I suppose you. So that is what <laughs> we see as we go yes. up to you. Yes. Out of supply with donkeys. But what does. Uh, Chad, see approaching. What does this caravan look like as they crest over a ridge towards oh this load? <laughs> we have to explain this. Oh god! Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Uh, I'm. I look like a Victorian uh, vampire kind of thing with the crushed velvet and the poofy shirt and a uh, uh, very uh, aristocratic. And uh, so there's some dude following me that's just a complete stoner. He's just broke and uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> hippie looking dude. And um, so I don't know if I had a vehicle. Did I have a caravan? We're sharing caravans, right? There's uh, several, carts, several carts. Several carts. Okay. Yeah. And you, your loan sort of bought you one that you contributed to the group. Okay, so it's a bunch of group carts. <laughs> Yeah. A headless camel, and uh, where does a camel have a centipede head? Headless, because the centipede head was kind of destroyed. Oh, okay. <clears throat> to harvest the giant horrendous <laughs> brain. And yeah, there's a giant millipede with a <laughs> tiny little camel head. <laughs> you can see it eating furiously. Imagine the size of a graboid from Tremors. Okay. And my skin is very porcelain ass. But if you look closely, I'm not quite a vampire. But you okay. can tell when I dress up from the vampire lands. Okay. And my name, good sir, pseudo vampire. Heptide von the Hemoglobin. Say it one more time. Heptide von the Hemoglobin. Okay. I can't remember what you have in your blood. Heptides or vampires? Vampires live in this kind of area. Oh. I was thinking peptid AC, the medicine. <laughs> I didn't even know it was no, a real I was like, thing. It's some blood thing. Maybe that's a brain thing. I can't remember. Peptides, peptids. Anyone know? You're the, you are the biologist, I suppose. <laughs> Call me peptid. <laughs> Call me peptid. Call me peptid. The loyalty Dorian seventeen is also full of blood. <laughs> <laughs> um, he has a, a round face and a square jaw and rosy cheeks. And uh, kind of looks like he's just off the farm. Um, if the farm is the inner city mob, <laughs> uh, he's there with his grandma, 
um, a hard-bitten character. Now, um, gone through various soul incarnations and in the body of a little gun mech. The body of a what? A little gun mech. Okay. I think it's got her face on the front a of it. Red, you can, you can see, like, the gnarly thing. old monster on the front. Is it a okay. And, uh, he is, um, kitted out like a, uh, like a criminal tough. Um, if, uh, if Chad has knowledge of the Hexat activity in the inner cities, he might have a clue that, um, loyalty is an actuary and insurance adjuster for the neighborhood watch. Okay. <laughs> Weirdly enough, Yikes. I make the giant centipede headless. <laughs> Go make a little more sense. <laughs> you know. It was an it was an insurance adjustment that allowed the centipede. <laughs> yeah. To yeah, the god of the bottom line allowed the balance of life forces and it worked out. Uh um, yeah, in comparison, uh, to all you handsome fellows, uh, <laughs> I am a thing of <laughs> blue lopsided, uh, I can't say lopsided, but definitely not symmetrical <laughs> person, uh, as, uh, you know, uh, what is it, weird kind of bubbles kind of go up under or around, just kind of consistently moving under the skin, um, as he has... Um, a little bit of a feud going on in his body, and it's only getting more intense as <laughs> he's taken on uh, new things, new buddies. Uh, uh, with him is a, a cloaked, hooded figure that uh, definitely looks like a cultist leader. Like, if this was the classic cultist sacrifice sort of combo, that's, that's, that's what you're looking at. You're also being followed by a, uh, you know, a baobab trees. <laughs> there, we've got two uh, biomechanical baobab trees that kind of look like this are following like 20 meters behind. Oh, their roots like the, feet. How tall is that thing? I, I don't know. Oh, I, <laughs> the ones that are following you, this is new, are uh, I'm gonna say 15 meters tall. Um, okay. So two level two biomechanical baobab trees. If you keep track of that, yeah, just uh, know that if we slow down, they will um, catch up. Okay. What was that from? Chasing him. Uh, the, I guess the question the there is the contagious curse. Oh, curse. tree curse. Mm -hmm. Definitely, like, definitely upgraded my phytomancy to expert as I am actively trying to speak to plants. Hey, <laughs> like, nice. Trees. So if if there's a danger to that. Is there is there a thematic bit? <laughs> like, is there a clear indicator of like how close you can get before as you're trying to like? I think really there. Practice? I think in this moment, as you're all coming over the ridge and kind of like the camera is cinematically going over everybody, and you see the little name at the bottom with the music playing, like your your thing your thing goes, you see the things crawl, and then from the corner, of those uh, like ominous things come, and it's just clear to the camera that they'll crush you, and you turn towards them, you're like, and then you start walking towards them. We'll start with that once we start the action. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> I need to get the name of those trees there again. <laughs> yes. Of course. Before I get into a quick question, does anybody remember what one saffron empty was called? One saffron empty? There was a sack of saffron that you brought from the Violet City. Do you know if you sold that when you sold the yeah. cat coffee? Oh. So that's gone, right? Should be gone. All right, so that brings me to the floor supply. I know, dry little bookkeeping here. <laughs> Very <laughs> important. Um, and then... Uh, it's, good. it's a good introduction for your rock man. <laughs> yes. Translates uh, directly into experience points, so... Uh, <laughs> sack of Ambrosia, what was that? Uh, Votobice. Yep. One sack. Got it. Ah. Uh, uh, And just as long as you're taking a peek at things there, how many supplies does it say you have? So, total in my supply count, the cart number four actually is not in saffron, so it's four supplies. Okay. Um, I, uh, we, pardon me, 
Um, 27. 27. That's what I have to. Depends where we're at. Um, I'm Alroy. I'm in story. Alroy? Yes. Like like the Jetsons character? Uh, yeah, AL. Oh, with an A, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I am joined by my faithful companion, Caster, who is a crab. Okay. Um, he's an ornery little shit. He likes to pinch and has a pension for finding out where it hurts the most. Okay. I can uh, think of just one place where that might be. It's not the same for everybody. I don't know. You know, it's his deal, not mine. <laughs> um, it's, it's all about, you know, teamwork. That's why we're a team. Good to know. I made a red brick. You made red bricks? Are you saying? Made of oh, red brick. Oh, you're made of it. Right. Um, I also have, you know what I cannot remember? Mm-hmm. So, I'm currently in some pretty sweet beds. Um, kind of like a great layered mesh number that we whipped up with uh, the D droids and the uh, Mind Nomads. Anyone familiar with the steps, which I think your character would be, would know the Nomads went to great trouble to make this honorific suit. Right. What was the pattern on it? I forgot to write that down. It was you said, camels, camels, flowers, and bees. Camels, flowers, and bees. I went with Second, because I have a lot of things to do. Um, it's, yeah. Um, I am a polyglot. I'm a necromancer. Those are my two mains. Okay. Um, I also have a monocle. Okay. Uh, made of black gold. And I decided, is it too late, that I can flip up? Oh, so I remember I you, to take it down. when you were first talking about it, you said you wanted to do kind of the pirate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> there's a flip up. Right, I, I just don't know if we can have that detail. Yeah, there, no. You spent a week making it, so I think yeah. Yeah, it makes yeah. sense. I, I, I forgo podiums to make it. So. Yes. I think I put a lot of time. <laughs> Here again. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> I love it. You did a great job. Um, yeah, that's like... Uh, the long and short of it. I have some stuff, but I don't think you need it. We haven't gone through like you can't what. We're just doing it. Right? Yeah, just yeah, what you look like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's what I have. Okay. okay. Along with that, the big worm, the carts, these folks, there is a road yacht. Broken car. There's a broken car being pulled by a camel. There's also an uh, active car. Part of your supplies is gasoline to power uh, Rouge's, you pay for it, Rouge's uh, car. And there's a fellow there with kind of like a... He's a... Uh, he looks a reddish pompadour. The Duke. Uh, the Duke has the car? Didn't we sell ours? You sold your working car, kept your broken car, to have a camel pull up, ate your cake car, and the Duke has a car. <laughs> okay. So I know, let's see, I've got uh, Magic Butler Stoner. <laughs> Who's following the Stoner around? Stoner yep. yeah, right, right. Bourgeoisie boner the stone. Boner the stone. Magic Butler. So imagine a, a kind of a Leonardo DiCaprio from Django Unchained, if you ever saw that type of snobbish uh, trust fund baby aristocrat <laughs> with a, a Xena bodyguard. And did you ever see He Man, the Barco, the little wizard? You just see, you can't even see his face because he kind of owns two. Goofy looking, obviously wizards because they have big wizard hats. Mm-hmm. They're all in a car together. And so sort of, he's standing up in the car mm-hmm. while Xena drives and uh, is looking at the tower. Just Xena and uh, yeah, what was your other name? Uh, Xena's real name is Ramba. Ramba Tan. Right. Yeah. Horny, corny are the wizards, no relation. And Rouge. <laughs> Rouge, Rambatan, and yes, and corny. And then, then um, if you hear us talking about it, but I'll probably introduce my name is Miela, uh, but you don't know that yet. And <laughs> I, um, my hair is pulled back in. A, what do other people call that? It's like a scrunchie or something. Like it's pulled back. My hair is pulled back, and it's red. And then the tip is white, so it looks like a fox tail. Okay. And um, I'm wearing all kind of like macrame, like kind of like fishnet. Everything is like kind of netted in my clothes. And um, I have some like little like hooks or cool things kind of like hanging from here. So some of the knots and netting and stuff. Um, 
And I have black claws and black horns. Would his character know anything about black gold? You're, if we're going with what's here, you used to be kind of somebody here. You were, you know, a proletariat in the cities, and then you went out to settle in the steppe lands. So, yeah, I think you know about black gold. You know about it? Well, so it's all made out of, like, the monocle, my horns and claws are made out of black gold, which in this world is gold that is black. But if you look through it, you can see what you're, whoever you're directing that at, whatever they're afraid of, but then you also start to feel the fear they would have of if seeing it, so you get a little bit of psychic damage risk, but also that insight. Okay. So can I say one other thing that you can do with that? Is that it? And its nature is sort of symbiotic. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I can mold it into a few things. I'm a black gold industrialist, but You'll want that later. You can tell I got a lot of black gold on me, and one other person also does, and I'll party. Um, what is what? Do you remember? It's a healing it liquor. It heals, right? Yep. 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 Oh, do we do we pool that? The you we each liquor? got a bottle, and we have a sack of the good stuff. Yep. Oh. The stuff oh, that yeah, got yeah, mixed yeah. with the honey. Uh, Loyalty's porcelain leg, since we're talking about. Because I. We, porcelain leg happened when we were walking around and it was busted porcelain everywhere. Didn't like yeah. the crinkling stuff. But, well, I hope got cut yeah. and infected with like porcelain nanites that almost killed him, but he fought it off and instead ended up with a like hyper reflexive porcelain leg. <laughs> yeah. So that was really quick on that one foot. So it is more of like that smooth. Always leads it. Because I was just like, once we met the porcelain princes, they had a whole other thing going on, like mollusky yeah. sort of coral-like thing. No, that was really like is more like straight up smooth. That was the coral crew. Yeah. The okay. Princes. Cool. They were in a coral cult or something. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Sell it on ten bodies. Yeah. Whereas yeah. oh, okay, cool. loyalty, it's like a porcelain sculpture <laughs> leg. Cool. I was just trying he, to... It makes him very quick. <laughs> I was trying to balance out the background. Yeah, he wins initiative and acts in surprise. <laughs> because it's such a, like, like, it was such a just straight up bonus. It looked cool, and it was, came to you in a time from, like, a thing that Hathak didn't like or trust. He was like, he specifically doesn't like your porcelain leg, but he's yeah. like, he's looking at the porcelain princess. This is cool. So I was trying to get that dichotomy in my brain. How do I feel about this? Yeah, well, and, <laughs> and now it has a ring of black porcelain at the top, right? That's kind of like your death. Right. Oh god. Right. Right. Got it. Oh god. Uh, tracking call. We can't take off. Mm -hmm. okay. Porcelain Smith. Oh. Ah, what are these? Uh, immorally flexible porcelain Smith. <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't want to trust it to anybody because there's it's like porcelain around his porcelain leg. Right. Uh, Precious. Find somebody skilled. All right. You meet each other. Do you want to role play a meeting, or how do you come to come together at the base of this tower? I imagine it could be you came to it because hey, tower shelter, that's nice. The door is locked and clearly has a magic sigil on it, and it must be a magic sigil of locking. It also has language on it that you've read and hanged out here for a while, hanged out here for a while, which is uh, people's meat market. That's what it says above the door. Oh, Alroy Historian, roll me a d6. Let's see if you get four or five, six with, uh, to know a lot about this Three. thing. Three. Okay. Well, you know that uh, it's Rouge, you, right, as the DM says this, right, Rouge's mouth is saying right. that it is uh, the architectural style that it is. Uh, down here. <laughs> Does everything belong where it belongs? Metaclassicist. It's a metaclassicist spire for it, typical of the old pseudo-naturalist dystopia. It's mm. just like Uncle said. So you recognize that indeed it does match that uh, architectural style, but you can tell uh, from the way it's been put together and from the material that it was built before that style 
uh, took uh, long, long before that style ever took over. It's as though people in the past built a future style before it ever happened. Trendsetters. Mm. Trendsetters on <coughs> like every 2,000 years, something <laughs> that's, that's when the uh, fashion re re cycles. Hey, Rouge, you know this Chad with the donkeys? They work for you. Do you work for me? <laughs> no. <laughs> Rouge, Rouge is still keeping eye contact with you, goes down the line and says, maybe. <laughs> this is my tower. He gets out of the car and so everyone sort of, wait, who's Rouge? He's, um... He was driving the car. He's the Duke. He's not a... Yeah, these are the three people that are tagging along. We have to take them to remind me of Tagging day. along. They are making quite an impression, though. <laughs> he's the one who hired us to... Right. Okay, yeah. but he's not, not a UR. They're We're sort not of us. bankrolling that's this why... whole operation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's why uh, Christoph's stepping in for... Uh, oh, I see. Okay. This yep, yeah. Rouge right. is my, one of the non-player characters. That's good. Yeah. Hey, friend. Nice donkeys. You know much about this tower? Ever considered working for the great Rouge Lombardo? Where's my deep? Rouge is bending over and looking through the glove compartment. I, uh, I just wound up here. I'm the last survivor of a group of, uh, of a, of a group of a caravan that we had, and honestly, I'm all out of supplies, and uh, I need some food. Ah, oh, geez, I know all about that. Sorry for your loss. My grandmama died some years ago. Hey, grandmama! Remember what that was like, Grandmama? It was she's rough. She's shooting at a snake in the grass. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, hi, mech. <laughs> There's a little printer on this little gun mech's body that prints out a little form after she shoots this uh, snake down. And she grabs it out and puts it in a, a little folder in her back. <laughs> it's I've seen Stranger Things. <laughs> <laughs> she's just keeping the books. <laughs> what it's an actuarial here, thing. Man. I'm not entirely sure. They just started dying one by one. And, uh. Did they show any symptoms? No, they didn't. They just dropped dead? They dropped dead. Hey, I thought. That was, Is that this was guy over. contagious? No. <laughs> no, that was. The trees, man. That, that was, was two months ago. Oh, right. I'm, I'm used hey, to this. Hey, I Could you check out? Never mind. <laughs> I was two months ago. I've been wandering ever since. And I came upon this tower and thought I'd just set up shop here. <laughs> Okay, well, that's cool. And yeah. so, do you have any money? Nope, a lot of money. Yeah. What, 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 what can you do? First of all, short came for you. If you didn't notice, I'm extremely handsome. <laughs> I have probably the best hair in. Uh, he is I, extremely I don't know if you noticed, but I'm passing the hair. I don't need any competition. <laughs> Well, I might give you a run for your money. Right. You know, sometimes people have halitosis and it's like, it's all close talking, like, this is a bit much right now. It's like, the opposite of that, in a way you didn't know was possible, is happening as, uh, as Chad speaks to you. It's like, you get the impression of his breath, and it's, you didn't know breath could be so pleasant. <laughs> Boy, you are handsome. <laughs> That's what I say. Even on the verge of starvation, I still got it. <laughs> I guess if we put it to a vote, you bring us on. Could I throw a pan to Hathok first? Um, well, I don't know about the contagion thing. Hey, Hathok! Hathok! And to Hathok. Oh, so you're approaching these trees, which are lumbering. You can hear the chitinous clatter of the <laughs> metal bark. <laughs> metal bark. I had some, you know, I had some training in phytomancy and biomechanics as well. Just trying to match the movements to start. It's just got this swing motion. He's just trying to figure it out. He's trying to like match some stops. Maybe he's trying to figure out what the where the connecting point is. Make a <laughs> success fail roll. All right. Uh, with it, of course, you'll have advantage because you're an expert fighter master. So this means success will mean uh, you jive with them sort of immediately and can converse with them. Uh, but failure means they sort of pause in confusion uh, and sort of return to being still trees for a while. Yeah, just <laughs> ponder this. <laughs> okay. So you start to dance and they slow down. You slow down with them. 
and you can just feel like they're what? what? They stop. They've forgotten that they're cursed to be alive for the moment. <laughs> but uh, you can turn to them more. Then it's just hey, 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 fuck. Just a full bend back. Huh? <laughs> 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 Quit doing your tree pose and come see if this gorgeous chat is contagious. <laughs> I'm <laughs> contagious with what? I don't know. <laughs> But something killed all of his gorgeous friends. <laughs> Everybody as good looking as you? No. <laughs> he's the last of the beautiful people, Athog, and we need to know if he's gonna live. It's just that full, just. <laughs> a full turnaround, like it all doesn't look right when he does it. Your stomach, like, lifts more than any other part of you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's just like a Zay, that's right, because. <laughs> mind of its own. I can move at my belly right? <laughs> in a way that isn't right. Uh, yeah. I'm like, well, alright. Is there... They've quieted down. I'll get back to that later. So what's going on? Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> the smell is great. The teeth oh. are missing. Uh, the skin... St- you can see it must be a progressive, the waxy translucence of this uh, person's skin. Uh, definitely irradiated. Source code. Corrupted would be a strong word, but probably not perfect. Okay. Uh, doesn't seem to be contagious. Just that book. You weren't Ooh, kidding. He is his Yeah, I'm so Yeah, nothing contagious. No, just pretty. Just <laughs> handsome. Yeah. Ah, oh, shucks, you too. <laughs> so you have to start worrying about your contagious curse someday soon. Yeah, maybe not this session. <laughs> I mean, like, it's not a... difficult. I'm like, I'm jovial, but like, if you have like a stick and keep me at a range, like, I'm <laughs> happily just. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's just used to like, you know, following. The, what is it? Those uh, indirect wow. sort of orders from masked, like robed figures and stuff. Like you, you just do what you're told in the non-verbal sense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's very easy. But you're broke. At the moment, if I could access my bank account. It'd be a little bit different. Well, I'll tell you what. I don't have any money on me. I'm broke too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How about I give you my bottle of Bodiche, which should clear up whatever the hell is wrong. With Oh, nice. Okay. And then in the future, once we find an ATM around here, <laughs> you remember your boy. <laughs> okay. How about that? I think uh, I think we can shake on that. Well, with a face like that, you're going to open doors for us. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm going to give him my bottle of water DJ. Excellent. Wait, what's that? It's a healing potion. Oh, okay. Yeah. Speaking of, Alroy, we were just talking on the walk over here about who's going to open up the door to that tower. If Chad is the type to open doors, I what tried. do you think, Rouge? I tried, but it won't open. I can't get it open. I found the deed. This is my tower. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I love it. He walks up to it. He forgets what he was gonna say. His uh, bodyguard rolls her eyes, tr- turns off the engine to the car, and says, "Horny, corny, unlock the unlock the magic door." You, the two mages look at each other, and they sort of approach the door, and they run their hands along the sigil, which is like burned into it. They nod, they sort of whisper to each other. They go like this. Boner goes up with them to <laughs> Stoner compatriot, and he also holds his hands like this. Chad walks between the two powers? of them. He says, hey, Horny, hey, Corny. His what you spread, doing? And I then kicks in the special power. Nice. As immune to side effects. Yeah, my guy. Yeah. Make that. Wait, your no, no, no. My guy's success is that. a, a kicking in. Failure is a. It's a. It's too sealed. That's a failure. Ah. Wow. What is, what is my non force of way? Is he just mimicking? Yeah. Communing yeah. with the lock. He's high. Has. I, I don't. Like, he's always tired. <laughs> Has anybody asked the current tenant? I, yeah, what's the spider doing? <laughs> yeah, no what's idea. This? Seems pretty, pretty chill. <laughs> some meters in the air, say sixty meters above. Just resting, he's asleep. You could call out to him though. 
Hey! <laughs> he awakens. Let's hey! see how he feels. Seven would be neutral, two would be bad. Oh, <laughs> well, wait, let's. Four. You can find a little rodent or something to throw in his web. Hey! No. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not you. That has just seen enough. That's also pretty. Squish Slash <laughs> looks at you and growls. Just uh, go tuck under the. I wasn't talking about you, man. Just chill. You said 60 meters? Huh? Is that reasonable? Is that, does that look like this would be 60 meters from the ground? I'm your, Let's uh, go with your spatial oh, sense. Sure. sure. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Yeah, that door looks tower. real small at the bottom. 40 meters. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. That's a really tall tower. Yeah. Let's look at that tiny door. Tiny door. Anyway. Wait, there, this is, it's just a tower and there's no wall? Nope. Why was I thinking of a wall? <laughs> okay, oh, yep, just the tower. Oh, what? How does it Magic. <laughs> Oh, Total magic. Slate thing. What was the thing? Traveling was... with a dude made out of red brick. It was something because it's yeah. obsidian it and what? Bone. Oh, and it's yeah. an alloy of yeah. obsidian. And Both bone. of those being very powerful materials. Almost a slurry, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's what I called out to him. Yep. And what happened? He turns over and his like web hammock and looks down, and you could tell he was once uh, parahuman, like all of you, but. He has uh, biomechanical legs. Uh, it looks kind of like the adaptation on Yelga, the battle camel. And he's she, not she one of your handsome friends. She looks down, he looks down and says, This is how speed race tower. You be gone. <laughs> and he, he, he starts going. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Saruja, oh, look out. That one doesn't work for you either, does it? Hey, this is my tower. I have a deed right here. It was bequeathed to me, and the uh, elf speed jay spits down on it to try and hit the deed. Let's see if he succeeds. Four, five, six. Uh, Rouge is able to try it back, but when the spit hits the ground, it oh, sizzles. Oh, that's a mm -hmm. Or maybe it's a face. <laughs> uh, um, Mila? I climb this tower. I make this web. This is mine. You be gone. <laughs> you can I don't stop. Put the saw on you, spit. but. Normally, when there's like, I mean, you took the deed to him. There's a oh, dispute. so you are putting this on? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> there's a dispute over the property. It was kind of your job. Cordy, Cordy, open the door. We're gonna go out there and we're gonna kick him out of that out of that web. I play ref here. Sir, I I left the uh, I left the door opening wand uh, in the now the estate in the Decapo in the Decapolis. Damn it. <laughs> Randla, the... could you like Ooh, dodge it cool. with the car? Nice. Oh, oh. Back to... oh. We also have a slug bison. <laughs> oh, that's true. Is it strong? I would think of it like leans. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Is it big enough to just crawl up the tower? Oh. Ooh, Ooh the slug. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. No, that centipede, whatever it was. Oh, oh that's it. Wasn't it like a dune worm oh, size? Yeah, it is a dune it's, worm it's size heated. thing. And I have some unbreakable silver thread. We could just yank that thing. I mean, is the spider going to spit acid at this creature? Though? Oh, that's, true. that's I don't want the bison to get hurt. Okay, oh, while all this is going on, on yeah. Boner's going to uh, sneak up to Chad. He's like, hey, dude. What's up? I hate you. What's up with your skin? It's healed now, right? Um, yeah, I is it yeah. translucent? I no, I haven't drank. Drink the potion. Drink the potion! <laughs> yeah, drink the potion! <laughs> Turn the legs off this guy! Oh, yeah, man. but like, like, how'd your skin get like that, man? It's been like that since birth. Really? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. You didn't smoke anything? <laughs> you wish. Does it, do you, are you holding? <laughs> what? Are you holding? Gummy, gummy, gummy weed or oh, shrooms or uh, <laughs> porcelain peyote. <laughs> nice. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost, I'm almost dry over there. Hey, spider dude, you got any drugs? <laughs> Roll on. <laughs> if Boner gets in there by himself, that would be so funny. <laughs> I'm liking this approach. <laughs> so Ramba is moving the car forward uh, and is uh, driving it into the... What is success high? Uh, success is definitely high. He's a, is a yes, he does. 
failures and no. Two, three, four, oh, yeah, four, five, six. Four, five, six. Yep, the higher numbers. Oh. He's like, <laughs> No, why? Are you holding? <laughs> I got some. A little bit left. I'll reroll his reaction. <laughs> Eleven. Oh, wow. He staggers down the side of the tower. <laughs> yeah, exactly. As he goes, you see the web sort of jingle behind him, and you can see there's all kinds of, you can't tell what they are, but things are like suspended in the spider? web. Uh -huh. There's, they're like items that you can hold. Oh, yeah, he's anatomic. I don't think he's like, actually yeah. a spider. I'm yeah. just thinking of when I saw my apartment. As soon as he gets down here, loyalty is going to like drop a one liner and shoot him in the head. Uh, he's definitely, he's definitely <laughs> coming in sight. Spider friend, this tower belongs. Hang on, what's up? How, how are we getting into this? Slam. Maybe you want to say it? You can't. You, he just came down to You can't somebody. outpace the man with the uh, porcelain leg. Yeah. You always win initiative. Oh. Oh, I love that. All right. <laughs> just... <laughs> That's one hit on him. Uh, roll to see if you lose uh, ammo. How many hits does he have? Nope. You can tell just by looking at him, he's got those big legs, six. So there's one out of six on him. His head, uh, you know, goes spinning like an owl, except you hear a whir. <laughs> he catches it, and there is uh, machinery as well as bone and brain that have been sort of splattered away. You can tell he's has been infected by vomish. Dude, not cool, man. That is not cool. He not goes cool. to spit. Oh, I knew he was a bow. He goes to spit at you. Make a dodge roll to see if you get spitted or not. A dodge. All right. It turns on the loyalty turns on his porcelain heel. <sighs> Very nice. He is uh, among you, uh, ready to spit again, or indeed to pounce on top of loyalty. Uh, Can this one bison sit on him? Nice. The slug bison <laughs> approaches. I so think he's pretty like big. Pushing the slug bison. How are we controlling this the slug bison? I'm kind of pushing, like kind of like tipping, trying to tip. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna go. Yeah, cow tipping. <laughs> slug slug tipping. Slug tipping. Roll a d6. It's with disadvantage. If you fail, definitely not. If you succeed, it'll like impinge on him, but not crush him. What did you say? That fail? Definitely not. So it goes up to him. His like legs are as you know tall as up to my shoulders, and they like joists down. And so you like push onto the legs, but he just pushes it away. <laughs> it's super straight. Son of the pushed her away. Uh, the spider oh. man pushed, pushed the, the whole bison. Slung bison away. Yeah. Wow. With two of its feet legs. Oh, okay. hmm. Um, what the hell, man? <laughs> he says, <laughs> "This is my tower." That's I invite you into my tower. He says, "Did you hear him? It's my tower. <laughs> Shoot him again." <laughs> Shoot him again. Uh, the boner's just sitting there, like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, Pepted. Uh, Pepted. Pepted. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. gonna. He's gonna attack. Do we do initiative or? I'm gonna bop around and try to make a semblance of what seems fair to me. Doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Okay. So me, I'll, I'll, I'll take no, your turn. I'm going to emulate the results of Troika. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm going to attack with my, you know what, I'll attack with my uh, spider, or my Wolverine claws. Cat claws. Excellent. What does that say? Um, Sorry. I'm happy. Well, I don't want to get You're right. Um, uh, the, 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 yeah, this is where we need to And the problem of not being able to read my own right. was that we could take what was Under, in it if we helped him clear it out, or, yeah. Yeah. or if he was going to have an armor. Unarmored, maybe it says? Like, they're, not, they're just claws, they don't have armor around them or something? Yeah, that's probably what that's it right. Okay. But it was a paying job, it was covering a lot Check of our nice. <laughs> Let's go with it. Roll, uh, four, five, six, you hit him, but one, two, three is the risk of melee combat. He hits you. He's going to take away one of your life if you go in. Can I use my ranged weapon instead? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Same thing, roll. Four, you hit either way, but uh, one, two, three, you lose. Oh, yeah. uh, okay. Six. Very nice. Uh, your rifle, right? Uh, God, I wrote it down. I think it is, because you used it on the crossbow? 
Is it possible you're using the worm? Oh, Steph Lander composite bow. That's what I was call. I forgot. Oh, because all I remember all those. Whoosh, whoosh, so a bow goes into his side. Just traitors, and he goes to uh, flee around the side of the tower. And tries to... What does that even mean? <laughs> I think he's only talking to Boner. <laughs> We're not his friends. Boner, are you his friend? I was gonna be. Bruce, are you sure this is work for you? Smoke him up, man. We could have. Pull out the shield. And... I was looking to see if he knew where, uh, if he had a dealer. <laughs> and you just ruined it. He's been chilling up there. No, the he's not spitting that kind of acid, Captain. He's <laughs> been chilling up there so high for who knows how long. And then this? <laughs> Wait a minute, he's getting away! Yeah. He goes around the tower. Do you have any reaction or any horse in this battle with the giant spider? Not particularly. I'm trying to stay stuff. a little bit neutral here. Yeah. Did you even him. know he was up there? Yeah, I saw him. <laughs> 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 we just met and I didn't bother. <laughs> I, I didn't try to get in, so he was cool. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna take out my shield and just kind of like stand by you, handsome man. Well, we're, we're gonna make sure it's just like, and then I really want to, because this guy is not acting erratically, unlike some of the bones we've run into. Which, yeah. based off of that, was like there might be a nest mother around, or he might be a nest mother. I don't know what those are yet, but I do have biomechanics as a skill set, as a skilled set skill. Is anyone wanting to try something, or I have an idea? I have, weak, go for it. Yes. I have a weakish idea, so let's hear yours. Well, mine was just going to be a repeat of, like, I still have my rope and one more honey of disassemblage, and I might try to take off those legs. Oh, oh, hang on one second, I'm going to be crazy. Yeah, like, okay, go for it. Okay. I'm going to call out to him because I see all the crap hanging up in his lap, and I'm like, look, we have obviously have a big misunderstanding here. <laughs> He's peeking at you from behind the tower and still my friends blood. as... A little trigger happy when it comes to bones. It's a long story. I'd love to tell it to you sometime. <laughs> but look, we're just trying to get in. Your web is obviously on the outside. We clearly have no interest on what's going on on the inside. But more importantly, I have something that you might want. I'm going to take out my crystal ball. Reroll his uh, reaction four. So he's back to kind of where he started, but he looks at it. I'll tell you what. <laughs> If you go into that gap in a wall, come down, open the door, I will give you not only this crystal ball, but my word that nobody's going to shoot you for the rest of the time that we're here. Yeah, and if you don't do that, they're not going to shoot shut you. Up. <laughs> he, he definitely was like looking at the crystal ball askance, but when you said promise nobody shoots you, his, he sort of like seems more interested in the deal. <laughs> so what do you think? Huh? We've come a long way. To be perfectly honest with you, just between you and me, this rouge guy knows the shit out of me, and all we need to do is get in here and you get him on his back. You get the ball, you get some piece of quiet. He uh, makes a, a like so a shiny. you know internet modem noise, and you feel like. I don't know if this is a real feeling, but like a uh, microwave is going and the door was left open and it's like hitting you. <laughs> and as a polyglot, you know, he's speaking at you in uh, Vomish. Make a D6 roll, 456. You can kind of get a gist. Five. Five. All right. Uh, he's uh, saying sort of the sentiment. It's hard to crack a totally chaotic language. But the sentiment the is, my like god, that? I've been through That's so much shit, yeah. and now I have to put up with this. Oh, so, no, 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 man, look, we've been through some stuff, mm -hmm. too, you know? And, uh, maybe, like, look, look, look. I'm just gonna write healing wine, because I don't know. I'm here to listen, all right? I'm a historian. I, my whole job is just to hearing people's stories. You sit down, you tell me what's going on, and I'll tell you what. Not only do you get this crystal ball, when I leave here, one more of these. I, I still got a little bit of weed left, too. <laughs> you give LSPJ the crystal ball now. Yeah, yeah. I'll go up. Let us in. Let you into my tower. These guys go do their thing, you and I. We're going to talk. Takes the ball, and then goes up the side of the tower into this... Uh, actually, not the 
this area, but there's a little hole here. Yeah. It's open to the side. It goes in, and then you see him inside go up this rope ladder away from you. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah. he took the ball, but he's fleeing. <laughs> Leaving yeah. you high and dry. Oh. Hey, Ramba, how's it going with the car and the door? He's driving into it, and you can see the, like the corner of the headlights being crushed. Oh, loyalty to get behind the car and push. <laughs> Wait, could you disassemble, honey, disassemble a lock? Oh. I don't see why not. Yeah. All right, so I try. <laughs> why didn't you just tell me that before I gave one? <laughs> I just thought. <laughs> we got a whole tower. We're gonna walk up anyway. <laughs> so what? If you're willing to use one more use, yes. Yeah, I think that's all my uses. Because I don't think I deleted the last use. Um. Yeah. So that's all. You then you have one use left because there were three. Oh, were there? Oh, okay, then I did erase. So you put the honey on or into the lock, and it falls out of the door like. Perfectly into all of the, con- the pins and the constituent pieces of the lock, but now covered in honey. Let's <laughs> it's open. Very nice. Oh, uh, I took care of it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, thumbs up for me. I got the shield up. <laughs> Here was our kind of first floor. Ooh. Now, you come into this room. You can't really see this one yet. Thumb there. But you come in here through the front door, and there are two big double doors at the back. Um, yeah. I should uh, do a zoom in and yeah. post. Sure my thing's gone. Thank you. Um, in here, you so the, you open the door, and above it says People's Meat Market. Inside, there's a bloody altar along one wall. Uh, and there's a mosaic along this wall uh, of a war queen wearing a nemesis like the pharaohs used to wear uh, and holding a rod that has like a euro symbol on top of it. Uh, you know, the queen, queen leather armor. Uh, and there are also roots all along the floor, biomechanical roots, kind of between the door you've just opened and the further door in. That's mm-hmm. the people's meat. Wow. It's a lot of biome. Totally at home in this setting. Uh, but I'm still contemplating that nest mother thing, just because putting up a conversation with you, seemed to have a rational thought. I'm still trying to wrap my head around the possibility that there's more than just him in here. Mm-hmm. Have any what, way to test that? or? Like, yeah, that's where I'm like, I don't... Uh, Perception roll. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> like, okay, so we're going into this thing. This has mechanical tendrils in here now. Yeah. Okay. Roots. Yeah. I figure there's probably some tools or whatever to kind of, because I mean I have was a naturalist portable laboratory to work for. Mm-hmm. And you've got this expert in uh, biomechanics. Okay. And oh no, I have an expert in phytomancy. I'm trained in biomechanics. Okay. That's These are roots, so so it's kind true. of got double skill. Yeah, been on worse jobs. A loyalty blunders into it. <laughs> right. Excellent. Now, they were talking to you, right? They were calling out to somebody. Oh, they talking to you. Okay. Well, I couldn't tell from my. You're <laughs> able to get past them. That's right. No problem. Nothing. To the uh, door. Are they like grabby, grabby roots, or just kind of lying there? They definitely move as you pass, okay. like slithery, but they don't. But they're not. They lazily so go don't towards don't you and don't do anything. Keep your gun. I'll be Why would I out. shoot? They don't have a face. <laughs> and a boy. Guns for things with a face. That's right. My grandma taught me right. He's killing a dead snake. I'm a hexad, not some punk. <laughs> I'll fiddle with Something the roots for a bit. <laughs> I'll keep those roots busy. All right. You uh, just so you know, you open the next room, and it's there are stone kegs, but they're cracked and dry, whatever was in them. There are stalls that have desiccated grain in them, so this was some kind of a storage of grain, and there again is a statue of this queen, this war queen with the nemesis and the euro stick, uh, and there are bushes, humming berry bushes have like come through the bottom of the floor, or, like broken through, grown wild. Um, yeah, the, you're 
you are, saw like the fancy glowing cherries when you were in the porcelain princess, and you gather that this might be worth some uh, cash. It's four sacks say. worth of berries. But also, four does the historian know this war queen or anything? So I actually don't. However, I presumably the guy who wanted to come here can tell us something about it. <laughs> oh, good one. Rouge, Rouge uh, looks at the statue, looks at the mosaic. He's he's still staying back from the roots, you know, waiting for other people to go first. Uh, but he says, you know, this mosaic. Let me screen. Wow, that light! <laughs> I forgot about them. <laughs> I recognize this. It's in the style of the mahogany rain. From the first expansion period. What is this doing in the tower of this era? Doesn't make any sense. He approaches. Uh, and as he does so, the deed that he is holding in his hand gets grabbed by one of the roots and pulled underground. And he starts slamming on the ground. My deed! My deed! Shoot these roots! <laughs> Rampa goes in with her glaive and starts chopping away the roots. <laughs> All right, so there's some damage on the roots, yeah. uh, but they're still kicking. Mm -hmm. uh, um, can I sniff the roots? Have they, like, when I'm in caves looking for black gold, have I ever encountered anything that smells like this? Nice. Um, make a roll. Four, five, six. Yes, you happen to have been in a scenario that makes sense for you to have met them. One, two, three. Um, maybe not. It's interesting. Though. You've seen roots. You've seen biomechanical roots, but you've not seen things break through the ground like this. It seems like these are here with a purpose. And that deed went underground, correct? You think these roots mm -hmm. were Yes. The deed got pulled under. These hired roots? Hired roots? <laughs> Who hires roots? <laughs> You haven't done a Oh, when, um, <laughs> when the roots <laughs> cut, they uh, spray up toxin, some kind of, uh, mm. yeah, toxin, and rouge begins to wrench. <laughs> she stumbles back out of the room and just wretches loudly. <laughs> And throws up, and then continues to retch uh, in, indefinitely. <laughs> That's the deed. Yep. And the noise echoes up the stairs that you can see at the back of this room. Uh, I'm just, uh, just hear the echo. Well, Is that something Boner would be immune to? This? Totally. Side effects? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> what's the size of the hole that was left by that root that grabbed the deed? Hand sized. Okay. Arm sized. Yeah. You gotta stick your arm in there, the back. Well, it only seems to have uh, some sort of defensive. <laughs> it totally wouldn't drag you down there. <laughs> you should do it. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it absolutely does. Hand go. I failed my uh, biomechanics thing, so I just assume this is part of the part for the course. Of Great. Uh, your hand goes down. Set this is a one or a two. Just, <laughs> so, nothing. Nothing but emptiness. The root seems to have gone farther than your arm can go down. Okay. What about these other roots that are around? Any yeah. interaction? Since you've gotten so close to the ground, they're coming towards you now. Okay. And I should pull again one or two. It's fine. They're just kind of nudging up against you. And slowly trying to constrict you like a boa constrictor. I think they like you. Oh. Try to... You get the sense that they are letting off radiation that may be as communication in the bone style. Yeah, interesting. Can I talk to him? Roll, if you can get a six on a d6, then yes. It's a very difficult language. Oh. I'm a really, really good call. My god. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, just, uh, how do you irradiate, or what is your like pseudo radiation that you use to to respond to them? What is it? Yeah. Like, what does it sound like? What does it look like? You can't really hear it. It's more of vibration. It comes out of my stirrup. 
<laughs> that is really important for you. Animating it. <laughs> it travels through things. But if you're close, you'll get a little buzz. Not like buzz. Like, calm down. <laughs> calm down. Oh, over there. Oh, I don't have any drugs. <laughs> I am not myself a drug. <laughs> it will kind of screw with you if you have fillings. Um, so if you've had any dental work done or cheap biomechanics, they'd be like throwing a lot of lead solder in there or something. Okay. Yeah. We haven't had any teeth. So. <laughs> you, maybe you would have had that problem. Yeah. Their reaction to you speaking to them is perfectly positive. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting three I'm sixes in the rods. Oh, 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 okay. Uh, it doesn't both off the rules. You reach out, yeah. You reach out <laughs> to the uh, roots in the floor of the first room. Really important place to be successful. Yeah, yeah, um, and they say, the deep mother sends us up to investigate the call of the interloper. Uh, the deep mother. Deep mother. It's your nest mother, dude. These are biomechanical, right? Mm -hmm. Does Chad's beauty have any similar like radiance? And, <laughs> and, like, talk at all? I know. I'd so like. Um, the roots. I'm um, just kind of like, just like, like following, kind of keep my distance a little bit, just kind of seeing what's up, you know. I suppose we did just race. Yeah, I is and look towards you. <laughs> mesmerized snakes. Tell uh, twist and dance. <laughs> Can I tell him to talk to the nest mother? What do you have to say? I would rather just tell her. You will need to burrow through the dirt and sand. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of work. You can't just send a tendril up here or something. The roots subside into the floor. And some time passes. But you get the sense that they sort of last word was halt a moment. <laughs> Time passes. Hey, come on. Get up the stairs while they're gone. Go there. Go. Yeah, okay. anyone who wants to cross the room while there aren't roots now is a good yeah. Do it. Ah, oh, gotcha. <laughs> Rambo, horny, corny, they come through the. Uh, oh, crap. Those sacks of stuff out of the other room. Get them out of here. Oh, smart. Yeah, yeah let's harvest them there. All right. You harvest four sacks worth of uh, Butler of blackberries. Butler of. How four sacks? Yep. I don't know if you'll have room to carry them in the end, but you may as well take it all outside and think about that later. Yeah, yeah we'll get We have there. plenty of room right now. We do, actually. A whole bunch of carts and that whole uh, the meat worm Mega has Campbell. 24. Oh, that's right. Good, good, good. Mega Santa Campbell. Campbell. And Campbell. each of those is worth 100 cash. Oh, Since we're nice. harvesting, can I drop a few drops of my cactus blood drops into the soil to re the soil? Nice. Absolutely. When the like when a killer for biomechanical For the berries? Are the berries biomechanical? The berries are not. They're they're, they're humming species. ominously. They're like uh they are radiated. Uh, this floor was um broken through long ago. And the same the same blunt force that broke the kegs that used to hold mm -hmm. some drink here also busted up the floor, and that's what allowed that to go through. Whereas the roots... Well, your, but your cactus juice, it. will that kill, uh, kill the biomechanical or roots or whatever? Oh, um, uh, the bio... I don't know. I mean, it's just blood. The cactus drips blood. And they're running an errand for us right now, yeah. so let's not go on loyalty <laughs> on these things. <laughs> You want to have you want to have a fallback plan? <laughs> Why do we always have to go in guns blazing? Yeah. Right. Because some of us like grandma are all only guns. <laughs> I think it is nothing else. Something came to us and we went guns. <laughs> we went guns. <laughs> That's a good T-shirt. <laughs> yeah. It's just you know, it's, it was solid. <laughs> my grandma raised me right, but I'm not really that book smart. And everything sounds way cooler if you shoot a gun after you say it. Yeah. Bye <laughs> bye on your looks. Oh, I get it. I get it. <laughs> I never really need to say it's business. <laughs> <laughs> the grandma says, Isn't that the truth? <laughs> <laughs> a root returns. Several of the roots. Oh, jeez, they're back. coming back. <laughs> Loyalty's heading up the stage. One comes up that looks like the root of a banana tree, where it's like a darker shade than a lighter shade, and it's like this cool color. 
Um, clearly the mother root tendril. You go up the stairs uh, to this room. I think that corresponds to those little, yeah. In this room, I'll tell you, it's a library. There's a plush throne back to Sitwam, and then all of the books have been bound in lilac snakeskin binding. Uh, that's pretty much it. A reading throne and a bunch of books. Boring. <laughs> yes! Loyalty is just going to keep going. Uh, like, uh, books, not. Books, roots, yeah. berries. We just went through your educational history. <laughs> like, those are not ledgers. Yeah, no. Those are clearly some sort of lore. Or novels or something. Uh, Roll a 2d10s for me. Uh, it's going to be a oh, 2d10s. Got it. Miel is staying with you because I'm interested in the art, so I want to hear this conversation. I've got a 38. Very good, very good. Yeah. What am I looking for? It's further in. It's so you're else. staying with me to talk to the root? I mean, I probably won't say anything, but I'll listen. Yeah. I was thinking about staying, but if you're staying, I'll just leave you guys with Splish Flash. What are you talking? You're leaving us with Splish Flash? Yeah, it's, you've got holes the size of fists. Splish Flash is the exact guy you need for this, if, if it comes down to it. I don't. <laughs> We can get out of this without having any more. Yeah. Just don't send him down without using the unbreakable string, please. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> I just don't want to leave the others. <laughs> Take out my spear and shield and start running up the stairs. As soon as this one starts speaking to you, you know that if you do carry out a uh, long conversation with them, at the end of it, you'll have to save versus a mutation. I'll have to do what? Save versus a mutation, because there's so much radiation coming in. I'm going to get mutated in some yeah. way. Oh, man. This is early. But she says, uh, I am Jane Machine, the nest creator from the void. What? Oh, I'm uh, <laughs> All right, I'm Which to everyone else sounds like, <laughs> Weeble, weeble! <laughs> it takes a while to sort of like gain an appreciation for this language. <laughs> it's like Finnish. Finnish is lyrical. <laughs> if you listen to a lot of it. <laughs> but, <laughs> <Bing bong. laughs> um, hello, Your Grace. Uh, we have come on a mission with a pretty boy that just ran up the stairs. He needs to My get children you. told me of him. He is radiant. <laughs> No, 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 not that guy. That guy, <laughs> that guy is super handsome. Like, just the pretty boy, not, not the good looking one. He's got like a really buff woman and uh, the, the other person with him. She looks sort of confused and down to one of her roots and they explain it using a root analogy. It's sort of like the thorny one, and, you know, the twisty one. How long have you been here? Very good question. I have been here for the past, I guess, how would you measure a century as a, uh, as a plant? I have been here right. for the past, right. 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 totally. Uh, 1101 rains. Interesting. Were there people here when you got here? I was created in the fast star 376 to tend to the bio garden of the vials. So is that a yes? <laughs> <laughs> the vials had created the people who dwell on this world long before I plummeted from the sky. Oh, fascinating. Okay. Oh, ancient well, alien cool. shit. <laughs> yeah. So. We're just gonna run upstairs quick. Are you are you cool with that? Find the Hesselin. Oh, okay. Sure. I mean, who is looking for the Hesselin? One other question: <laughs> Is the guy hanging out in the web at the top of the tower yours? You speak of E. L. Speedray. It is a rogue auto fac generator. Uh huh. No connection to you. No, it belongs to Sandra, name error. Okay. <laughs> That's your state. 
Okay, well, uh, thanks for the time. We're just going to be on our way now. Um, happy prom from, from up the stairs, you hear, bang, bang. <laughs> oh, never mind, never mind. <laughs> just a book. <laughs> what do they want? Say that again. What was the word? What are they Find the Hesseline. The Hesseline. The one that sends the far range speak to Sandra and I and other mothers. Oh. Find what it wants. The Hessel Okay, I got it. And so, uh. Whoa, whoa, we will reward you handsomely. Like, with what? You might want to write this down. It sounds plot relevant. <laughs> a game that I didn't know about. Many plot. treasures have my roots plucked and plundered. We're looking for. What do you seek? Weapons? Armors? Errors? Yes. That's what everyone else is saying. That's what you hear downstairs in this conversation. I love it. Spell pewters? Harvested implants? I'll tell you what. The only thing my crew and I really need is that sweet, sweet cash. Cash. She uh, speaks to one of the roots and says, where is the deadwood box with the cash chits? And it says, I will retrieve it. And it goes into the sand. And it says, if you stop the Hesseline or find out if it is friend or foe to the Volms, then I will give you the deadwood box of many cash chits. Taken from the fallen sky chariot. Well, Your Grace, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to go rejoin my friends. The Hassley, we'll look for it, and we'll come back. Uh, how big is this box? <laughs> like, you big? Are we talking, is it a know, big old box? It, the tendril goes down and sort of outlines the size of a pirate treasure chest. So it's a good size box. <laughs> very good. Much pleased to meet people. All right. Come up the hand. stairs. Crash! <laughs> uh, it didn't look valuable. <laughs> this is an investment, grandmother. <laughs> All right. Uh, make a d6 roll to see if you get mutated. Do it, I too. Oh! Ooh. 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 We're hanging out close, really close, really close not close. I don't know. I'm just about. Okay, so. Well, let's roll, and if you get a one deck. Otherwise, say. Are you serious? <laughs> Take that dice away. No. Well, yeah, I, I'm starting to wonder. I didn't get a six, but he's getting all six <laughs> Meanwhile, in the library, a book, bookshop has maybe been overturned. Well, well he's just skipping. Yeah, he's library? skipping the library and going to the next level. Next level. Yeah, he doesn't. He reads accounting books. He reads accounting books. That's ledgers, right. right. Yeah, he only cares about ledgers. He doesn't know about this literature and base stuff. So you start in this area. You haven't seen the other areas yet, but you can see the first one. Um, what is this area? I'm glad you asked. There is a tapestry hanging on the wall there. You can see it by the squiggly line. So you come up to the third floor from the spiral staircase. A tapestry shows a gladiator chained sort of at the base of a, uh, uh, what do you call it, you know, big fighty pit. <laughs> yes. And it looks, it looks cagey, panic, wide-eyed depiction, and it actually moves, the threads move, and it looks towards you. And it says, people, people, please. And it's, the chains sort of keep it in place. Kill, cut you, Samethyst. Kill the tyrant. Free me. The queen of this tower, the war queen. You talking about the roots and stuff? The root of evil, perhaps. Roll a d6. Is that the one he was talking to? Oh, no. it's all the depictions of the woman warrior. Oh. Yeah. He was talking about. He was talking to the root queen about the Hesseline. This is cut. Oh, I got six. All right. Um, this tower was really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think he did wrong? I don't know. I, What's your crime? My only crime 
My only crime was refusing to fight for her pleasure any longer. After centuries, after the tower had began to crumble and be countlessly attacked by those who were sick of your tyranny, after they had to reinforce the walls with ribbons of stuck force, I said, no, I cannot be an agent of evil any longer. And her chronomancers, they deconstructed the threads of my being and reconstructed them in this sick prison. So what was the six for? Uh, that was to get a little bit of detail about oh. the uh, stuck force threads in the wall. Oh, okay. Yeah. So were you the kind of agent who was like paid on commission or were you salary? Great question. For each fight, <laughs> I was paid with, with uh, ruby honey from the Ambrosia clans and knights of... Yes, you stuff. know what I'm talking about. <laughs> knights of great uh, pleasure, all the drinking I could wish. That sounds all right. It was. This queen must be a real bad boss. She wore on my soul. Tis true. And I saw so many of my fellows turned into tables and wall hangings. She really liked to turn people into things. <laughs> do you, uh, do you like movies about gladiators? <laughs> do I ever? <laughs> I haven't seen a vidi crystal with a gladiator in too long. <laughs> I mean, I feel bad. I've seen a girl man naked. <laughs> <laughs> Is Rush Limbaugh still pouring up? Oh. Yeah, let's say he just finished. <laughs> <clears throat> Ramba has been carrying him. Like, you guys know. Maybe I'd give him some, like, I don't know what, like, electrolytes. I mean, I have a med kit still, so I don't know. Maybe I give him some. I'm just like, tell us about this tower! Oh, God. Jigsaw. I only know. I only know that architectural style, meta classicist, old pseudo naturalist dystopia. Downstairs, you've got something from a completely different period. Tell me about your family. Well, <laughs> my, personal. My uncle. My uncle inherited this. I'm a lark. He was a collector. He liked collecting wizard towers. He liked spells. He said he went through it and there wasn't any spells. You couldn't even find any spells in it, and there was a brass kitchen, which is... Actually, I'd really like to see that, because it was really <laughs> out of period. I just walked away. <laughs> Ramble. Ramble, <laughs> right before we all need to eat like food, all of a sudden she carries him like a baby. Oh. I mean, Let's find some food, she says. So far, I'm not very impressed by her new home. I feel bad about it. Chronomancer's going to work on somebody, but it just it sounds like the gladiator guy was skirting his duties, so sounds like he had it coming. <laughs> I killed hundreds, he said. Right. All I wanted was my freedom. So like if we if we I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, but your butler puts his hand on your shoulder and goes <laughs> forward and says, Freedom is only he, t he goes to turn. Yeah. He turns the curtain around, so it's facing the other way. <laughs> Wait! I <I've> waited. <laughs> He's yeah. he has a butler always. Yeah. Freedom's for people without family, man. I don't know. You guys people are talking gibberish to me. What are you? Old hex had saying. <laughs> I wonder if the, I need to know. Personal note: Is this like Needle of the World, where he can't register it? <laughs> hmm. I can't register it, did you say? Yeah, I remember like some point during that porcelain city, I was like, just thought, because like people started talking about Needle of the World. And, I'm sorry, what? I don't know. Oh, <laughs> nice. yeah. oh. I don't know if freedom's going to go in that same. The concept is very difficult to like, as opposed to what? <laughs> you know, if you're a fish, you don't know what water is. Yeah, all right, well. <laughs> it's a word for not belonging. Y yes. You yes. Know? It's like when you go off on holiday or on a job, but then you just keep going forever and you never come back to the hex head. Yeah. It's like that. Or, you know, your cult or whatever. It's like hell on earth, in other words. <laughs> whatever flavor cult you want to roll in. Right, yeah. Your grandma kicks open this door. Yeah. Uh, in which there is a couch. An armless, I assume everybody's kind of in this area. Yeah. There's an armless couch. It's draped with an ornate autumnal rug, and next to it, there's a velvet armchair, sort of like mm -hmm. this couch is sitting to the side. And there is a crystal rig 
uh, of some kind. It has a tank full of, of black inky liquid and then two hel kind of like VR helmets like coming off of it that are chained to it. And one says Psycho uh, with a K and one says Analysand. There's also a little cabinet inside of the room. Oh, oh I'm yeah. i to push through and just crash on the couch. I want to be sick of Analysand. <sighs> yeah. Boner so, will put on one of the... Come on, Boner, let's do it. Um, yeah, Loyalty's putting the other one on. Nice. At random. Between the two. All right, evens, you're the analysis. Okay. You're the psycho. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, the Everyone looks on as the black stuff in the tank goes down. And you can see it going through tubes into the helmets. Um, Intriguing. And you, uh, Boner falls asleep. Immediately, and you enter into Boner's dreams. What, oh. is it, what does it look like? <laughs> Boner. Man who cannot be phased by anything. Is dreaming of this enormous camel. You hear this music going through. <laughs> um, the uh, the candle, camel has pendulous breasts and a glittering monocle. And the camel kneels down in the desert sand and leans very close to Boner, its giant camel eye glittering through its monocle. And it says, Boner, the tea party, Boner, you were late. We waited, we waited for hours and you were late. And then loyalty feels Boner's anxiety because he really meant to come. He was supposed to bring the weed and the scones to the tea party and the camel loves weed and scones and he fell asleep and he forgot. And then he wakes up and it's still, it's time for the tea party. Um, but he just needs to sleep another minute and he wakes up again and he goes out to the desert and here's this camel coming with the, the pendulous breasts and the glittering monocle and it kneels down and says, Boner, the tea party can't happen without you. And now he's just even more agitated. Um, and then he's kind of he's stuck there. I'm not sure where the dream goes from that point. He's really worried. <laughs> I only have a little bit of weed left. <laughs> I'm trying to find more. John, what happens next in Boner's uh, dream with the <laughs> camel and the tea party? Um, all of a sudden, uh, it starts raining. <laughs> and everybody gets soaked. <laughs> and uh, they're upset. As they said, we didn't do a rain dance. <laughs> they feel cheated. <laughs> it's not fair. And uh, their lighter gets soaked. And they <laughs> the and all the drugs get ruined. And yeah, it's turning into a real nightmare. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Boner's secretly so stressed out all the time. He's just trying to get high. I just, he seems so chill. <laughs> it's all of a sudden. Yeah. What happens in the we dream next, man. Kai? Oh god. It'll be a nice uh, detailed dream. Jeez. Well, it's, it's got to get worse. I mean, like, <laughs> the, the water, like, the sands just become, now it's just waves of water instead. <laughs> it's just going to be flushed along. Ooh, some sort of spiral. Oh, he's going to find... Oh, no, now it gets real trippy. Because the spiral swirling <clears throat> vortex that brings you down and just... And there he is, in the very same machine. <laughs> And, just, and he makes eye contact with you. Oh and he reached, and he uh, Slow drip finally is gone. Boner? <laughs> Whoa. Loyalty. Boner, is this a giant bong? Are you a giant camel? <laughs> no, that was all you, man. I, that's, that's your psyche camel. That's, it was speaking to you. <laughs> Feels like I'm always late. 
Yeah, that's got to be hard. I could like feel your stress. I still feel your stress. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Boner, could you imagine us a raft or a friendly porpoises? Do you like lucid dream when you get high? <laughs> No, I've tried, but, uh... I mean, are you, like, right now? I'm trying to imagine a friendly porpoise or something to save us, but it's not... It's not my dream, man. All right. Every time I lose a dream, I wake up, but let me... And then you both wake up. <laughs> <laughs> the tank, uh, has, like, three marks on it, and it's gone down, so there's two marks left. Uh, the little cabinet you now see, uh, is marked, and it says, uh liquid catharsis on it. <laughs> so the cabinet holding the black cheese? So there's like the the chairs they're sitting on, the machine they're hooked up to, and then mm -hmm. there's a cabinet which has okay. a but it, it's marked. You don't know what's in it, but it says liquid catharsis. Liquid catharsis. Yep. Yeah. So uh this psych rig is, you know, the size of like a Star Wars med bot. That kind of have a little sense of how it works. You can go into someone's dreams. Uh, we're bringing this along. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta keep this one. Put it on centipede. <laughs> you set to Megapede's dream of camel treats. <laughs> oh, I was thinking we just put it on its back. Let's be. We want to lift the car up there. Oh yeah. I mean, we'd have like. Yeah. We can do both. We can do we all. We could sell tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Who has a crystal clock now? Yeah, exactly. That's what I was saying. <laughs> right? Job's over. All right, let's move. <laughs> we got it unloaded. This is what we came in for. <laughs> oh, man. We knew it when we'd see it. We, we saw it. Loyalty's we... thrilled because Boner has way better dreams than loyalty has ever had. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> loyalty's just like, we're bringing this along. And, like, Boner, if you ever want to do that again, I'm so down. I know you get kind of you nervous. Find me a like, connection, man. like, maybe <laughs> yeah, you know, there's a little support. We all have needs, in right? In dream space. Yeah. And, I'm you know. real low. <laughs> you like you always say that we always have some. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and yet you keep producing. It's amazing. Um, Miela wants to, like, you said there's a chair or a couch in the room. Yeah. Miela wants to try to listen because in the tapestry, say, the woman turned, like, other people into things. Oh, like, yeah. Can she tell oh, that's if, smart. Like, oh, like, this is a person or anything? Well, a uh, yes, no would be six. Oh, so. <laughs> so we're keeping the dream. Yes. Right. No, we got it. Got it. it, it takes take up a, a sack. Takes up Does one sack. sack. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. It's, uh, well worth it. Um, and you've got yeah two uses of that black stuff left. If you open up the cabinet, it has um, three more tanks. What is this oh, juice? Those three what more is tanks. it? <laughs> is that a separate it's sack or the whole thing? Ah, how much is a tank of liquid catharsis? Uses. Yeah. Oh, I thought that, that was like a sack. residue that came out of the dream. Let's like say it's dreams. one use per stone. Mm -hmm. uh, ten uses per sack of liquid catharsis. So got and you have, nine, you've got a sack of liquid catharsis. Doses. You have nine left. Yeah. Wow. We have nine turns with this, and it's, it's yeah. one sack. And that includes the rig itself, so we're not talking. No, nope, the rig is so it's two rigs. One for the sack, or one for the rig, one for the fuel. God, nine years catharsis. <laughs> you roll a D100. This so is it like a, like, a, like a water cooler? So it's just a jug in, in my yeah. tapestry. Stick it upside down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Eleven, I think. And then next thing awesome. you know, it's like you're floating in it. But in your mind, I mean... In your mind. <laughs> Give me like four more rolls yeah, like that. Yeah, I'll put something together. From I, I, was 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 no, I got out of it. <laughs> no, I'm running good right now. That's that was gonna hook me up. I should have gotten it out of place. Ninety-seven. There's a lot of numbers. We're 
just going to abandon the guy in the tapestry? <laughs> just, we, we did. Yeah. Just turned it over. Wow. Well, he's preaching freedom to people like, who don't how believe much in good it. You, it's like, it's just, <laughs> this guy he's just time. he's a rock you know like what good is a talking rock to any of detail you can't lay him on the floor you're gonna feel bad you don't need a flight what's that five? I was thinking he could cut around, around him and then maybe he could just like run around yeah. I, have like, cut him out. I have an idea oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. is there somebody there is there somebody somebody in my room <laughs> yes hello I mean do they speak just what I speak um, yeah, they're speaking in olden. It's like they're speaking old English, you know. <laughs> hey, you. Is there like a little mouth? Who's it? Who is the... And it's a couch. It's, the couch has an ornate rug on it, but as you get close to it, you realize it's upside down. It still looks oh, so lovely. Oh, so it's the rug that's yes, talking? it's the rug that's talking. Ah. Oh. So you said flip it over? Yeah. All right, so I flipped the rug And over. upon it is a person like the... Oh, like the couch. Person? Oh, man, I gotta get up. Too. <laughs> Poor Boner. It's like it's Boner's still laying there, but half of it is like, and you can see like the feet of somebody, and then their head comes down, and it's like very mutated to look like kind of a bunny with its ears are like, drooping down like a dog's, and it's sort of a bunny-headed person. And like, hey, I've been here. I don't know how long. Just listen to people talk about their feelings and their parents and their childhood. <laughs> and love of God, just kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Unravel me now. Yeah. <laughs> you see that thread pulling? <laughs> this is life I don't want to live. I can't We're believe. Going to just run away. I never thought I'd see anything again that this takes in the room. Look at that wall. <laughs> A ceiling. <laughs> um, well, I know some, like, netting and weaving and stuff. Can I weave you into a more comfortable a tonal position? Or can you tell us anything about the warrior queen so we can maybe turn everybody back? Cut you, Sam. What? Cut you. The queen. Yeah. I stole from her. That's why I'm here. I stole the rod of economic might. <laughs> Thought that I would be able to turn back time <laughs> and get rid of this terrible curse. <laughs> Can we all hear him? Or... Funny. You could all hear him. What'd you do with the rod? <laughs> after I was, t after they hunted me down like the rabbit I'd become, they took it back and turned me into this. They gave me a test to find out what would be the worst eternal torment, and then they threw me onto this couch. <laughs> <laughs> Loyalty is there, but is not paying attention. He's busy, like, <laughs> gathering up the tanks of black goo. Uh, Jake, could somebody give me a... Oh, hey, we'll just use that rug. And blocks them all on the rug. Just <laughs> <laughs> start pulling up the tanks of black goo into a sack to carry them away. Great. <laughs> I mean, is this queen around? Should we be concerned that she's, like, around? Did you lift that tank up? Uh-oh. Oh. Oh, Jesus, yeah, there's a guy in there. there. <laughs> She's timeless. She's All right, I'll just I use the it. tapestry from the other room. <laughs> We're going to wrap that one up into a sack around the tanks and look, she's going to disappear for a minute while we hauls them out to the car. <laughs> Freedom at last. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I was thinking was, why don't we make him our, uh, our caravan flag? <laughs> well, you know, he can fly atop the uh, the centipede. Nice. Right? Awesome. But you I think didn't realize we had other fabric people to do it. So <laughs> yeah, well, we, we could drape them both on two sides of the centipede. You know, we've got the room. Yeah. We've been dragging, I mean, you know, Pretty Boy and his entourage. And Gladiator crosses. as a banner. That's totally, pretty awesome, totally right? Great. This guy is, well, he doesn't know it yet, but he's a trained therapist. Obviously, he's been <laughs> listening to people's problems for years. <laughs> I say he flies the flag. That's a great point. Yeah. <laughs> he might not have chosen this profession. I used to be a reaver. I used to be a reaver. Like I used to rest. pillage and raid. I could never do that again. I know that people have feelings. Um, so is this queen likely to show up here again? Like that? She's tried to use the helmet to talk to herself. She's been here for centuries, 
locked in the tower, unable to leave, unwilling to admit it to itself. Is she unwilling another to admit tapestry? That her tr the one time she trusted, it was it was fatal. No, she's stuck in one of these. Other she's tapestry. here in body, oh, somewhere on the top floor. She, she goes where she wishes. Come in. Yeah, I only I only only heard from her when she's in this room. Usually, when she's talking about her problems and being trapped. <laughs> what, what, is, what is it for her oh, problem? She's trapped. She feels trapped. She feels like her the people that she hired to work with her have abandoned her here, and she oh, doesn't know how long. Were they been. here for a long time? They. She was. I didn't tell this to her, of course. But she was a she was a terrible boss. They were destined to leave her eventually. The Chronomancers made her that rod, which is a magnificent legendary item worth it would have been enough for me to retire and look like a person again. But no, that wasn't enough. She wanted to be thrown backwards in time and forward so she could be the queen of the past and the present and the future. Whoa. Oh yeah. Those Chronomancers left and Those he stole the rod? Gone. You well, stole yes. that rod from her. Yes. From your high lord. This is a Captain Tommy. <laughs> well, you have to understand, she was a tyrant. She was terrible. She told people they'd become addicted to water and she kept it from them. <laughs> that is, that is a part of a, that is pretty cruel. Yes. What high lord's doing. Well, it still doesn't, doesn't warrant theft from your high lord. <laughs> if she didn't have to... I, if she didn't have it anymore, she wouldn't be able to torment people across you're, the fabric of time. She is highborn. You're, you're a small joke. You're right. <laughs> I have, I've listened to the hearts of people from across the socio-political spectrum. We all, we all bleed the same pathosis. <laughs> all right, yeah, you know. Well, you said that, uh, that, that you're... Not much sympathy for you. Your, your queen uh, got betrayed. He's pretty comfy, Boris says. Only once? <laughs> well, I'm just putting together the pieces of her sometimes drunken ramblings, but it uh, seems like she was betrayed and locked in this tower, probably know. by the Chronomancers. Is that what happened? Is that what... Rouge, Rouge, uh, like Grant's horny and Carney, say, guys, we we don't need to listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> this is horror stories. Let's go to the next floor. Uh, uh -huh. Kick in that door. It's Horny, Corny, use the kick-in spell. <laughs> oh, so it's his family that trapped him he's, here? He's just noticing the parallel between how the mages betrayed uh, Captain uh, Samoth as the War Queen, and he doesn't yeah. want his mages to get in. Oh, his, yeah, yeah. his very mistreated mages again. We didn't eat for a week. <laughs> so we did. So we don't know Has what the, the actual again? betrayal was. I guess now that you mention it, no, she always spoke of it in vague terms. She wasn't willing to go there. It seems as though it was a dark place in her heart that she was only willing to go up to the edge. And I would never push her any further, you know. I've seen what happens when you do that. But she was never willing to even set a toe across that line. I think she's in a very significant denial. Oh, she has powers? Well, yes, she has a rod that can turn the fabric of time. She also clubs people to death with it. Okay, 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 okay. I'm just right. asking, I'm asking. Right. Hey, everybody, you're still talking to the rug? I loaded up the dream widget. Let's go to the next floor. Yeah. Corny and Corny kick in this door. We, said, we have some very attractive men in our party. I'm feeling <laughs> like there could be some I'm feeling magic happening. I'm feeling optimistic. Uh, Pathak is hyperventing like, a little bit. He's like, you wait, you went outside? You left the tower? We can leave yeah, the tower, right? Yeah, just I uh, loaded okay. stuff up on the <laughs> camel feed, you okay. know. <laughs> the roots let you pass, no problem. Well. Just, the roots let you pass. No problem. He's talking about how the ladies I, we, stuck. We cooled it out. We're on really good terms right now. Mm -hmm. it's, it's chrono mages. You, as you went by them, they chrono they mages all trapped in this like, town. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, with the fat sound. Yeah. <laughs> this room has a wooden a wood crate and also these two foot tall three two foot tall like crystal lenses. Like you can see they bend the light. <laughs> and it's you as you lug things out back and forth in and out of the tower. You have to listen to this. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Loyalty's on the, like, we work for Rouge and we get to loot whatever we want. All right, crystal oh, yeah, lenses. Yeah, okay. I can. Can I roll to remember? Because I can't. Like, my character, remember if there's any parallels between the lore we've been hearing 
hear and the legends and stuff you've been hearing in that other city? No need to roll. I'm okay. happy to tell you. Um, I don't think so. You've caught on to sort of the mother, the Vom mothers, and the fact that the Vom mothers are being called out to by the tower or the Hesseline in the tower. That's, I think, the biggest thread that connects with any. Oh, I only got the Vom mothers. What are the Vom mothers? But yeah. Vom's violent machines the uh, in this tower? that attacked at yeah. the oh. porcelain citadel last time. Oh, okay. It's thought oh. that they have, and I guess now confirmed. This is, by the way, this is oh, canon. Is, this is called an anti-canon setting. Yeah. Uh, the canon contains conflictual and mutually like mutually yeah. conflicting things. So we have to make up what's true. There are home mothers and uh, aliens. This one said it came from space, yeah. from a fast star, sure. which are you all know fast stars. You can see them. They have predictable patterns. They seem to orbit the planet. Um, that's the connection. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm trying to. Think. Nothing you've found yet. The humming blackberry bushes are reminiscent of the kind of bushes that the porcelain princess princess had, which you have to put some work into cultivating. Line on one of them. Yeah. So they were. Do I know what the hassling is at all? Would anyone here? What? What? Anybody what? know? Has anybody heard of a hassling? What? The, the what butler. The, the butler oh, god. gods. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. <laughs> gonna turn out well. <laughs> That's always a good sign. Hesseline is the name of a hedge wizard and vine druid who was kicked out of the Emerald City Academy for experimenting with vomes. She brought the she brought the vomish artifacts into the Rainbow Land years ago and was forever banished to the Steppe Lands. Okay, so a banished witch. Mm -hmm. Royalty totters back into the room with one of the big lenses, oh. peering at everyone through it. All right. Hey, check this out! When you look, look through it, it oh, bends no. light to show what's above. Oh. So if you look through it, you see what's mm. above. The ceiling in your case. Uh-huh. Unless you play with any, it, you can look it up. Any spiders up there? <laughs> it, you just see the ceiling. It doesn't look through anything. Yeah, but I mean, so far, no. Oh, well, they're not looking up, so that's spider dude. I couldn't understand all of his characters. What else do you think this is great? Hey, Captain, look. He's got a tiny head. When you make eye contact through the lens, you are frozen, paralyzed in place. But you see. The name. Your last dream. You see Pepton's last dream. It's another dream thing. <laughs> All right. So is roaming through the lagoon fields <laughs> of his homeland, tilling the soil because he's got that lagoon farming uh, skill, <laughs> and um, and then he gets in his, and he and he gets in his uh, uh, vehicle and safe drives. <laughs> <laughs> he's just dreaming of his various skills that he has. <laughs> Dreaming of using his turn signal correctly. <laughs> <laughs> the pleasure of the click, click, click. <laughs> Keeping a proper distance behind the next my boom tractor ahead. Caspian, what unexpected thing uh, arri arrived in in uh, Captain's last <laughs> dream? Um, fish balloons, just like fish balloons. Yeah. a ton of them floating towards you. Oh. What's the feeling? Joy, scared. Um, Jealous. Are, did you just make that up? Or are there fish balloons in this world? I think there are. Like like it's it. dreams. There are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> dreams. Uh, I think just wonder. Nice. Wonder. You grok that the container, the glass of the container that held the black goo, is made out of this kind of material. And then, uh, yeah, then what, the lens that he's looking through right oh, now which allows him to see the dream. Yes. It's made oh, out of what material? Uh, it's this crystal. Uh, it's a crystal scale. And uh, it's the same thing that that uh, psychoanalysis machine. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. And then uh, I'm going to dream of my parents uh, yelling at me. <laughs> sort of. Uh, and my father is, of course, a, a, a true vampire. Thousands of years old. <laughs> what was he cosplaying as? Just a rare He's really a farm man. 
You're <laughs> like you farm before he uh, before he got turned into a vampire. But he's risen through the ranks. No. He's been around for a while. Between you so. and your parents, like protective wall. Ah, yeah. Oh. But that's uh, yeah. The the fish balloons convinced me to to uh, caravan. Mm. And it's sort of, if you analyze it, maybe you will understand that, that that's the source. Of, <laughs> my parents are the source of my con, compulsive caravan. This comes down to it. Yeah. 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 Well, how, so, big, how big are these lenses? Is this like really like a good Two foot. Okay. Oh, it's huge. So, yeah. Yeah. So this is like, I'm gonna um, like a stone, like an inventory slot? Or is it like. Exactly. Yep. Okay. It's like. It's very big. That big? Yeah. I'm going to carry it. Can I tell he's viewing my last dream? <laughs> uh, roll the d6, I don't know. One, two, three, no. Four, five, six, yeah. Four, yes. Yeah. So whenever you look through these into someone's dreams, they know that you're doing it, so. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shake off and, like, walk out of the... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna walk out and walk away from the... <laughs> from the crystal. Hey, here, Pepton! No, no, he hands him the other one. <laughs> you do me now, you do me! <laughs> I think we should... I think our time is better spent exploring. <laughs> The rest of the boner the takes it. I'm having a go for it, boner. <laughs> 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 go for it. The toner. <laughs> scale to um, loyalties here, here. Boner has the other one. Okay. Although, is, unless is loyalty frozen continually in that dream, or just when seeing it? Just when seeing it. Okay. When he gets a chance, Bonner's gonna look at the camel through the. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude. I'm making a little um, card for Boner quick. Okay. One, he has an infinite stash. Two, he has. <laughs> oh, that's new. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's he's, he's, roll for he's that. always <laughs> up all the time, but he always seems to have some. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a stash of holding. <laughs> Start him off like that. Maybe I'll get more complex over time. As long as he continues to believe that the stash is always up, there will always be half a night left. <laughs> That's the. Uh, it's. Uh, if I think it's I have tragically enough. like his endless anxiety in his dream. If I think I have enough, it's empty. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> but I think it's, it's running out. I have an well, what if, what if it was the, the forever nut that every time he breaks it in half, he <laughs> can always <laughs> break off another half of it forever? Yes. Oh my god. Uh, Zeno. Zeno's nug. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he bought it at a uh, gift shop called Gifts of the Magi. <laughs> it's like a dugout. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're in this weird tower. What do you guys do? <laughs> what, what do we get to? Third floor? So far, you're on the third floor, and there's a spiral staircase going further up. Do we explore yeah, that little floor then? There's still a box in there. Yeah, there's a wood crate. Oh, no anyone look in, look in there? I'll look in there. It is full of the rarest of all trade goods, Ultra J needles worth $25,000. Good thing you looked in there. That's a wow. really oh, nice. Way to look at something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Way to follow your curiosity. <laughs> what well, are they My again? family's uh, highborn. We have a, oh, obviously. You know, six cents about these things. I know, I know. It's like you got those sack gloves. What did we pick up here? A uh, sack of Ultra J needles. Ultra, Ultra J? J? Ultra J. Like Jay. a blue jay, because they're, they're they come from birds' feathers, but they're like ah, crystal. ultra jay. I got it. Needles, twenty five k. Yeah. Are they for uh, heroin or it's anything? I think they are what? heroin. Is it for anything? <laughs> but like just bird the, heroin. Just the needle. Bird. Bird heroin. <laughs> <laughs> any bird. <laughs> like a generic bird horse. <laughs> The, inserted. Uh, you don't need to put them at anything into them. You just oh. insert them, and they make you. They make one the talk of any party, but clumsy. Hmm. But clumsy. Can give you XP for party points. So so loyalty is immune because he's yeah, just kind so of that way already. Wow. <laughs> so you spend just as much. Maybe you get more. We can figure out the details later. But no, right. let's remember that. Well, I can tell you that. So the more like uh, acupuncture, finally. Yes. Getting the amounts that we need. Make of this. Free ourselves. Oh, we haven't done last time. 
Yeah. But we need things. We want stuff. You had a great time. You made so many levels. <laughs> awesome, bro. What well, yeah. <laughs> but we're fixing that very quickly. So as that's you it for this level? Yeah. <laughs> yep. okay. um, Should we go to the next level, guys? Yeah, well... Yes. Has anybody... Was, wasn't there like a spot with books? Has anybody checked that out? I Using really wanted to. No I am. Difference. I am a historian and a polyglot. So yeah, if, you, if you want, yeah, go this, for it. All these. Uh, I say we. Keep I don't going want to run into. We've got to go back down, and once again, I think we should pick uh, up Gladiator we'll Dude. Oh, as our, uh, yeah. like, yeah. The other guy is in the. Well, you got the other guy in the. The other tapestry on the on a card already, right? Did you already take him downstairs? Did you leave him downstairs the tapestry with Gladiator? No, no, we left the one on the rug and used the Gladiator as a bag to. Oh, grab the gladiator. Okay. You because left the uh, the one who's been tormented by psychoanalysis for the past however many decades. Just just in the yeah. Oh, oh, no. Yeah, if no, 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 if, if he's, he's the only one who's like making any. I, oh, man. The fox wondering about this. Yeah, like, uh. It's a comforting tone, and I'm kind of going through something. I might need a blanket. It's <laughs> kind of thing. It's just going to wrap him up around him. You brought him, right? Yeah. Oh, I'll. <laughs> Yes, well, he comes back up the stairs from hauling the last load of loot out and says, Hey, Hathok, your friends, the trees, are getting, like, closer to the tower. Nice, they're moving again. I think they're, like, following you, like that shrubbery did the other day. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 they're going to they're gonna do that. Uh, I, I, could, I could go outside. I could just go <laughs> right outside. I could go and it just kind of, like, it's the first time he, like, looks over the hooded man. It's just kind of, because the middle of a job, but he's like, I can, I can go outside. What are we gonna do? <laughs> he follows you as you call it that way. <laughs> I say we keep going up. You. <laughs> all right, next floor. John, how are you doing? I could be there all. Day. Say what? How are you doing? Oh, good. Yeah. Next floor. Come up to this little slice. Did anyone feed you? Did we have to, like, you're just still starving. <laughs> I'm, I'm still looking for food, but I'm not, I'm not convinced that y'all are like the the right, right oh, side yeah. to take here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm kind of like, do you want do you want to snack or my something? A bit. <laughs> oh, we gave him the honey wine, right? We gave him. Well, the, I, I I tried to hear it, but it didn't. Uh, oh, you didn't. You didn't <laughs> just, don't drink things from strangers. I'm saving. Yeah. I'm saving that for. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. yeah. I just like. Well, we picked those cherries, too. They're cherries, to be honest. I know. Just remember first impressions. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a drink, stranger. Yeah. 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 I noticed I'm not the, saying uh, that it's going to destroy trust. Completely, <laughs> we may like... <laughs> You've offended our rock, man. <laughs> hey, I'm in debt to you. I, yeah. It's cool. we got to find that ATM, though. We do. <laughs> I'm not worried about it now. We're we're all of ours. <laughs> I think you should just drink it and get healthy. Cause we're gonna need that pretty face here. <laughs> don't worry, I'm I'm chill. Like I, I don't need the food. Like, I'm hungry, but it's been a few weeks. But I love the raw dazzled by your looks. And you <laughs> I saw the people's meat market by the way, but I was like, I'm vegan. So. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't bother trying to get it. Yeah. <laughs> This room has hanging in alcoves in the walls, Biomex. Oh. Uh, ten jellyfish porcupines. Oh. Also in the corner, on like a little podium, there's uh, spell pewter. It's like one of those, and this would be the second time I've <laughs> mentioned these in this game, a Mac that has like the handle on top. So it's just a podium holding it. That doesn't have any of the guts, but the computer itself is sort of on top of it. Yes. Um, that's what's in this room. The jellyfish porcupines are dormant. Did you say they're trapped in tapestries? Nope, they're just hanging in the walls, like, ready to go. Okay. They're, like, what, grenades or something? They're well, creatures. creatures. And they're hovering in midair, so they're oh, some kind okay. of aerial creatures. So. Okay, but they're chained to the ground or something. But I imagine they do this thing. Biomechanical yes, jellyfish is. porcupine? It's right in the tentacles and the quills. Like. So there's not a nice inch on that entire. <laughs> so this, I assume the soft spot is the quill spot of the. Okay. 
Bingo. Yeah. I'm curious if we ever need to make an opponent clumsy, if we can stick them with the needles we got now. I mean, they'll be the talk of the town, but also clumsy. Nice. So let's think about if we ever need that. Weaponized. In battle. <laughs> Definitely. Um, Should we take these? Are they black in the door? I'm sorry, I was just thinking, 250 times 10 is... 2,500. So I said 25,000, but it should be 25. Yeah. Is the value of the porcupines? You were talking about like there were needles. something. Oh, the needles. Oh, 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 yeah, let me double check. I mean, if that's a single instance of it or whatever. A great example of my head being all over the place <laughs> when I run these games. <laughs> to your question, or yeah, you could weaponize the trucks. Porcupine needles. This thing command. 25,000, indeed. Wow, 25,000, okay. That's a lot of cars. Yeah. Um, are these guys blocking the door? No. They're not impeding our advance? Nope. No. I'm just chilling. Dormant. Um, They're pretty cool. They yeah, are. Biomechanics, okay. I can get there a wasn't... couple of them to hang around my shoulders like I was blocking. <laughs> <laughs> can you spin them? If I go up and grab the spell pewter. Spell pewter. All right. You're able to, you know, dung when you pick it up. And, <laughs> well, and it shows three uh, spells that it that it has in it that uh -huh. you can activate. Our, uh... It's like the scrolls of the scrolls. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> so uh, pretty, it's pretty bulky, so it would take up two slots to hold it physically. Um, and it spells that read out on it, like a DOS readout or something, are rats to clams, ferment rat milk, and yeah. regenerate. Rats to clams. Hi, Allie. <laughs> We're getting, it's two slots. Yeah. And it has those three spells in it. Um, oh, I haven't spell. actually given up stuff because I... Alright. Uh, we got tons of cargo I'll space though, right? In the... Mm -hmm. In the centipede? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, on, the on centipede. our carts and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, we got room. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, we've we got, got so much room for loot. Yeah, Unless right you want to try and keep it to yourself and hide it from us. <laughs> I thought, well, obviously, you know, I have it. I thought that, that <laughs> really I, that's does. the way I understood what you were saying. Like, But if it would, it's just going in with the group. Yeah, if you want to take it downstairs, just put it on the cart. I mean, you can hold on to it in case you want to cast those spells. Well, that was my other question. Maybe yeah. we need those. Because uh, I have the room right you now. Find some rabbit. For the that time, time being, I'm going to yeah, carry it. Want to do it. <laughs> All right. And let's not disturb the stabby jellyfish yeah. unless somebody knows how to. Uh... Can I talk to him? <laughs> oh, the bio. Mm -hmm. Wake up! Biomechanical. <laughs> Roll a d6. Uh, four, five, six. It's theoretically possible to talk to them. One, two, three. No, it isn't. Three. Three. Nah, they're not the talking type. They were designed, as you inspect them, they were, they're basically like, you know, Castro told me they're a bunch of dicks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're like Morris coded it out. Like, <laughs> and then y'all are thinking of maybe going to the next room. Well, it's hand to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> with your trees and your butler. As you go to talk to the trees, he investigates the sigil on the door and goes to uh, put it into his black <laughs> Yeah, sure. <laughs> Just a plethora of domestic magics, such as <laughs> lock door. Sweet. <laughs> oh. Okay. okay. So, bro. Maybe you can help. Maybe you can help me with this. You know, at least for the uh, pull up that rug that the car <laughs> use that as more of a big... nice with the uh, artificial foliage. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna try and kind of meander them around the building as we go. So I'm trying to kind of. Would your butler's domestic magic be able to shampoo the rug? Oh, he does all kinds of things. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably would make him feel now better. we're asking the real questions. <laughs> what, make the guy in the rug feel better? Yeah. No, yeah. he's here to make me feel better. He's the one who started talking about chrono mages. Ah, he needs to bring me down. We've heard of chrono mages before, right? Yeah. I think just in this adventure, but yeah. Yes. Not me personally, but... <laughs> 
We're <laughs> the world, this world, we're familiar with chrono pages. Yeah, they're kind of a, they are, they're a thing of the past. Okay. But yes. I thought it sounded <laughs> Um, you go down the stairs to the, uh, to talk to the trees. And in that front room, you encounter seven. Oh. Let's go generate. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Seven. Uh huh. The uh, wicker fetishes. So they are made of. Uh, they're wickered together. Yeah. Uh, they're the kind of things that like a wizard would control or use, you know, your grandma's. Yeah. Uh, and they're all holding up a crystal orb in a circle outside the tower. And they're, they've like put it into the sunlight. And they're just contemplating the orb. Contemplating the orb? Yeah, a crystal orb that they have. Oh, okay. It wasn't the orb that like I was in the spider guy. I had friends already. <laughs> right. Different orb. Okay. Just kind of looks over the tower, looks at the trees, looks at them. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Start walking over towards them. Hey! <laughs> they look down from the orb. Six of them slowly turn their head back to the orb while one continues to look at Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt business. Do, do you need any, uh... Well, I... Uh... <laughs> We were just in the neighborhood. <laughs> Saw you putting in work. Do you, uh, do you need any assistance? You get a plus one on the reaction roll. <laughs> Very nice. It's seven, eight, nine. Um, this one walks away and walks up to you. All the others adjust to like have an even circle while they look at the orb. This one approaches you. <laughs> he says he's walking up and she whispers, You're not a grown man, sorry. Do you whisper that to your butler? No, no, it's just like it's to him. Uh, it's like, like he can't even. Hey, you're not a grown man, sorry. <laughs> it uh, comes up to you and puts its hands on your cheeks. Uh, you can see it's made out of roots, like someone's like, root, magicked together roots into this oh. thing. Whew, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> I can't just kind of like rest my hand. Like it's just like a default thing where you just rest it and fully submit to the hooded figure before you. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. A psychic <sighs> voice you hear call out to you. <laughs> yeah. You totally comforted. It. <laughs> yeah. uh, and it says, are you friend or foe to the Vomes? Oh, I'm job uh, acquaintance. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't want to say that. I've done my best to talk to them. I've uh, done my best to... It squeezes your head, oh. and you flash oh. through the recent memories of the past few weeks that you've had of Vomes. <laughs> oh. uh, and then it sort of goes past the one of the Vomish uh, porcelain guards shooting back in the porcelain city. And then it sort of like freezes on that in your mind's eye. And it says, look at the violence they commit. Vomism is a scourge that must be stopped. And then it sort of comes back to the moment, and then it's sort of <laughs> just staring oh. at you to see your reaction. Oh, right. I, I was, Stuff I've heard, uh, they were saying they were uh, the Vomes that go mad, the ones without their brood mother. Yes, yes, the Vome mothers are the key. I have right. learned the key to end Vomism from them to the little oh. they know. And... Oh! <laughs> okay, so you can get all that crazy... Exactly. Okay. Their physical <laughs> forms will remain. But the corruption will be gone. Give me, you just <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's... I'm... I thought I was mad, it says, and it shakes your head. <laughs> Let's see who the mad one is now. It's like this tiny, you know, the pit droids from oh, yeah. episode one. Is this 
the Hessling oh. failing. <laughs> I thought the Hessling was in the tower. Man. Well, maybe. I don't know. Really I, I, how are you? I, how, how is that possible? You need only bring me the brain case of the Johnny Fack Five. Fack with an F or a yes. V? Yes, <laughs> one of the living factories of old, old. Really trying to brag about how he knows how to read now. <laughs> 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 That was a good time. Johnny Fack. Sorry, that was the uh, Johnny Fack was what? I should say Source Fack Johnny Seven. <laughs> <laughs> you can, you can. It seems like the thing, even though it's just yeah. holding your head and staring at you, you get the feeling like it's consulting notes. Ah, uh, because she is. Johnny Mnemonic Seven. <laughs> so, <laughs> how, how would you, why, so what are you doing now then, if not looking for this? I cannot leave. The tower is necessary for my work. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the chronomancer then comes back every time somebody says I can't leave. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, <laughs> it's, the, it's the slip of the tongue. It's like, so, Hesley, how do you. <laughs> uh, how do I go about finding this? Uh, Who told you of my name? Who sent you here? I... Again, it goes through your memories. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> the roots and the deep mother that's all i know the roots as yes. there you must choose your side are you with the proto humans or with the mother or with the vom mothers the other six put the orb down and oh. turn to face you Whoa. perhaps i spoke too hastily perhaps you know too much <laughs> know too much that's oh <laughs> i know too much yeah. <laughs> I think it's pretty obvious what you should say, <laughs> regardless of your true feelings. <laughs> Search your feelings. <laughs> Search your feelings. I've got yes. to be honest. Yes, because I am obviously really good at resisting this guy's ability to just search through my mind. <laughs> it's really my strong suit is my car. <laughs> oh. Oh. Proto humans. As in, Us, I, I've, I've sorry, I've been, humans. your people, my people, man, I've been traveling around and there's, there's some stuff brewing and you can see through my mind, <laughs> like you, you can see, I've heard tell, mostly it's the fact that he's been starting to piece together the patterns of uh, intrigue that like, there seems to be something about the uh, animalistic proto-humans, I guess, like, so what do you say proto-humans? He's noticed because I've been doing things. It's like he's been noticing that all of like the mustelets, anything that's like animalistic, the cat marmot people, folk. the marmot folk, the beetle folk, or one of the, they're called the great folk. But there's something about beetles in there are having this kind of alignment that goes contrary to the other humanoid esque <laughs> style things. <laughs> when you say proto-human, <laughs> it's just that big question. <laughs> The machines, the violent machines. Right. They must be stopped. Right. Of course. <laughs> Good. It relaxes its grip. And then a fireball emulates and destroys the six wicker things that are holding your head. Uh, and oh my god. How does that? Um, <laughs> you uh, have to lose one ha haba or life of your choice. <laughs> All will be revealed. <laughs> just sneak attack. We have to stop the violent droids. Well, if it's that specific, then yes, of course. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, a fireball? Let's go with Ha. I'll take a Great. Um. This is a one. It's not. All right. Uh, the one holding your head says, 
what is the meaning of this? It looks up, and your butler is approaching, having just thrown a fireball at them. And uh, it's see your Whoa. butler. What does it look like as your your stat score is drained? Oh man, it's fireball. That's so classic. Uh, <laughs> it's it's that thing where. Um, the sizzling along the skin from like just the sheer heat is like really uh, is accentuated by the fact like cause I'm a slimy sort of guy like I'm supposed to be in the mud mostly <laughs> so, like the bubbling heat wave then also is just accentuated by the fact that it's all of those nanite creatures are moving away from that exact same spot so it looks like it continues on further than it does. Well, I have to say also that in addition to the nanites and their skin being harmed, something of your sort of elemental ha has been eaten away by your butler's casting of this spell. So ah, yeah. he uses you oh. to fuel his spells. Oh, sorry. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. Cool. Then that's just that's just not so much the burning as much as the, the impact. <laughs> so that's uh, still one of them left. Uh, yeah. He was saying. He said those things were trying to harm you. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm just kind of weak in the knees now. Just, uh, oh, yeah, they were they were really in there. He left up his leg to crush the one that remains. <laughs> hey, thank you. <laughs> Let's see if uh, he grabs his foot and bites him. <laughs> it's a fight between him and him. Yeah, if it's. If it's if the thing attacks back, then it's just the spear. Ah! Awesome. <laughs> try and finish him off. Roll, uh, try to succeed to harm it, otherwise you get harmed. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Two, that uh, failed. My god, this thing's gonna kill you and your butler. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Uh, it goes to attack him, he goes to dodge. So is that a life for me, or what? My god. <laughs> what did I... I did not see this coming. What did I take? You take one life, what, your life goes down by one. Okay, it's life cheese, okay. Uh, it's fine, it's fine. I'm only a low level we character at first. We can build you. We can bring it back. Yeah. Yeah. This foe is beyond any of us, he says. <laughs> he grabs you and begins running back into the tower. And the little root pit joined the sheets that's fist. <laughs> 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 Meanwhile, back upstairs. Oh, wow, that's my tower. Oh, hey, Hathok. <laughs> we were just about what to, like, go get down another door. You? Didn't you used to have eyebrows? No, I'm making, I'm making that up. You don't have eyebrows. <laughs> Did you have eyebrows? How did I get up here so fast? <laughs> 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 it's just a shame. Ah. <sighs> So I found the Hesselin. Hesselin. Found the Hesselin. Well, yeah, okay, well, that's good news. What do they want? They want to stop all of the violent. Uh, I, it's, it's the worst. Oh. They want to stop all the violent. Uh, oh. I just kind of remember is that he, like, his bow exploded. <laughs> <laughs> We're stopping the what? No, come on. There's like more loot above. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, it's a whole thing. They're holding an orb into the sky. And <laughs> really, and he just kind of mumbles and walks in. <laughs> they tried to attack us. One, the one, the one followed you all the way up here and appears at the doorway that you came in. Oh, for real? Hungry for blood. Oh, jeez. Wait, 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 wait. I, You always win initiative. Yes. Uh, use up a bullet. All right, so your ammo should be. Uh, cool, cool, cool. I'll note that Hathak having a turn from you is very defeated. <laughs> he just, yeah. he's just, he just doesn't. <laughs> it's gonna one, two, three, four, five, six. Pick someone randomly to attack. I think one, two. Make <laughs> this is great. You drew its aggro. It jumps onto you. Gonna... God, jeez, nothing dies when I shoot it in the head here. <laughs> what is this place? <laughs> Grandma <laughs> turns and changes his hands. Not yet, Grandma! Not yet! <laughs> Make a uh, dodge or die roll. Dodge or die? Well, dodge or take a life. How high up are we? Uh, it was successful. 
Very nice. Anybody else as this uh, little root gremlin is trying to destroy loyalty? Yeah. Can I just blast you and try to tie it up? Very nice. Make the roll a few four, five, six. Yeah. Wow, so in five. Ooh. So you uh, sort of get the rope near it, but it. Uh, it's How big is it? It's like a pit joint from Star Wars Episode One, but made of roots. Oh, okay. Uh, that's true. Any other ideas? I get it with my flail. How many points does it have? Uh, impressive little thing. More than you, more than you would have thought at first brush. Uh, it's got four. Or it's got three left. It has three left. Yeah. If you miss, if you get a one, you're gonna hurt loyalty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I, I, I kind of want to talk to it. You know. Because <laughs> that's what you can talk radiation. to it when it's grabbed on you. Know. <laughs> there seems to be a theme where loyalty shoots at something. <laughs> and I try to with it. <laughs> So now we're back to the, you know, we've got our stick to go in. Very good. Well, I'm, uh, I jump in, wait. Wait, 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 wait. I hear you the hessling. Is this true? Does it only... It goes to reach out to your head. Oh, legs on I'm still holding on to you with its legs. <laughs> the, the things are coming at yeah. me. Like, not to hurt you, but it's just like to communicate. It. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. try to throw it off of me onto Elrond. <laughs> There it goes. I like the face sucker. Yeah. Yeah. It uh immediately tries to enter your mind, make a save one, two, three, it sort of enters your mind, four, five, six. It can't control your thoughts. A thought didn't get four. one because you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. no, yeah, of course. Four. Alright, so it's trying to sort of get a read on you psychically, but you can sort of tell it's doing that and keep it from doing that. It says, Yes, I am. Who are you? I'm Elroy. Um, lovely visiting your tower. Uh, how long have you been here? I've been here for months. Some months. Time flies. When you're trying to end the greatest threat to para-humanity that's ever existed. That's Come on, so Elroy's got the thing We're occupied. Talking. Let's go kick in the door. Violent machines. The violent machines. Got it. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, nobody likes the violent machines. Um, are you making any headway on that? Yeah, we're gonna go kicking the kick door while we has got the thing. Busy. Are you getting anywhere with this question? Absolutely. Oh, you are. Great. 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 <laughs> so, like, deployment stage. Are we still prototyping? Oh. What is, uh... I have created the ritual needed. I should be able to make a prototype anti-bone spray, but I need one more ingredient. After conversing with various bone mothers, you can tell she's getting excited and sort of <laughs> not thinking about holding back her trade <laughs> secrets. Yeah. I I need only enter. I need only uh, hack the brain case of one source back. It has the last line of code assuming that it's still intact, which I believe it to be, that should allow me to find the sort of, uh, to find what I need to uh, nullify the violent source code in any bone exposed to the spray. And then those idiots back at the Emerald University who said I was mad, <laughs> they'll see, they'll see who the mad one was. Yeah. Yeah, I met those guys too. And, and <laughs> but I, I want you to know. That no vision. Yeah, I'm on your side. Here. Nobody wants the violent machines. Uh, They're uh, violent. They are. Look at the havoc they breed. And you know who wants them even less than you? The non violent machines. They're not all bad. I think you're going about this. There's one little piece that you're missing. Is that. Not every biomechanical creature is, you know, a bloodthirsty death beast. You know, uh, some of them are just broken and they go off on a limb, <laughs> but they're giving everybody else a bad name. You know how this is. You see bad apples. I know it's been a while. You had friends once. I still have friends. My wicker fetishes. <laughs> yeah, well, unfortunately, I'm looking out the window right now and I'm rushing out. 
They look a little, what's the word, like charred. That wizard. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> and the thing looks back at the <laughs> butler. Just <laughs> leans away. She says, of course, of course, I don't want to destroy the machines. I don't want to make some kind of a bomb or a death spray. It will just change their source code so that they are no longer corrupted. Oh, that's fantastic. So the... Does she want the case that we've got? No. I'm thinking of, I'm getting my game. Okay, it's up. in... You would, it must be retrieved. I would get it myself, but I need this tower to arrest a certain affliction that uh, is threatening my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your life is tied to this tower? In a way, yes. Oh, okay, that's yes. Cool. That's cool. Yes. I mean, I won't tell anybody. It's just between yeah. us. Because she's understand. on the head, I'm not, we're just like... R right, you're just psychically <laughs> There's talking. a certain point You understand, where... if, you work with, if you work with violating source code long enough, eventually you're going to... It's, it's like working in a nuclear laboratory and just flitting with cancer the whole time. <laughs> so this tower has a time glitch, which I can take advantage of to take take yourself alive to finish my work. It's great. Um, okay. At a certain point, that, if nobody else jumps on to rip the thing off you, Hathak will try. <laughs> that is great. Right. No need, no need, no need. <laughs> well, uh, you're talking out loud. The, the, the root mother wanted you to find? Yeah, exactly. Okay. I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to decide how to get that chest of gold. So if we can once again make a union with these two and every wash with peace ball, you get more clothes. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so there's However, the... if uh, she just maintains perpetual threat, now I'm at a little bit of uh, what's going on for impasse. Although it's kind of hard to believe that they aren't aware of each other since they've both been there for a while and presumably have to walk over these five and can't probably just get into the place. <laughs> and the other question I would love to ask you talking is, to the yeah, yeah. is, uh, is Do you there ask anybody her about here this who's not furniture? I'm not sure what you're talking about. Is there another person here, the warrior queen? Oh, yes. Oh, queen. she is. Yes. Have you talked to her? Just the once. Yes. And how'd that go? I paid her money and told her she had a very nice tower. She was easy to flatter. Most most warriors are you know, the smartest people in the world. Where is she? Um, she seems to be caught in some kind of a time trap. Uh, after I spoke with her, she disappeared, presumably to a past or future state. Oh, interesting. So she could be anywhere. Or in anywhere. This town. Right, exactly. Oh, that's fantastic. She's the only other person here? As far as I know, yes. Any other threats? Um, my wickers have found that uh, my far-range communication with the foam mothers seems to have uh, 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 convinced them that they should send out scouts. So there's a giant spider person and some roots in the basement and various other bones who have come to try and find me. But, uh, Oh, okay. Great, great. Yeah. All right. Well, if we see any of those people, you know, we won't tell them. Either. Very good, yes. I have fairly uh, effective stealth magic to to keep invisible to bones. So. Okay, great. Um, will you, you know, like go in my head? <laughs> um, yes, will you go to the... <laughs> I have to... Will you um, travel forth to find the brain case of the source fact Johnny Seven and bring it to me? I, we could try. I could make it worth your while. Like, what are we talking? <laughs> you need only travel the few weeks it takes to get to the somewhere. <laughs> right, the ivory plane. You want yeah, the other bit of the map? Johnny Seven Source Code Cave. Oh, the Trail of Vomish Dreams, actually. Makes more sense to me. Trail of Vomish Dreams. Johnny Seven Source Code. Yes, You'll there. need to bring me its head. Johnny Source Code Johnny Seven's head. Oh, I got it. Yeah. 
questions you guys go with? <laughs> oh, we have so many quests. <laughs> We're about to maybe tick one off with the head here. That's what I was saying. Well, so is though. the queen not here that warrior queen? She might be at any time? Any time, from what okay, I understand. Okay, so then, like, we don't have to necessarily wrap that mission up right now. But what does a rouge dude want? We came here this is my tower. I need to live here. I have the deed. This is my house. Hey, what, I got what, 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 My parents kicked me out. Him here. We just had to bring him here. We're yeah. done with you. Right, and you get the three sacks of sanguine porcelain. But if you clear the tower, I'll also give you a $1,500. Oh, yeah, that's right. What do you mean by clear the tower? Just check it get out. Get rid of that freaking spider guy and whoever this lady Wait, with the did. wickers is. Well, we did get rid of the spider guy. He ran off. He, he's in the tower. He went back. He ran back into the tower. Oh. Hang on a second. So if you, Chris Hasley, yes, if we go get the source code, yes, and we cure Bowishism. I don't need the tower anymore. You don't. Nope. I can cure myself. Do you want to come with us? I can't because I fear I would. Turn violent. I would turn into a violent machine monster if I left the tower. Oh, no, that's easy. Fun. Yeah, okay. I'll teach you astral projection. I'll teach you the time pause meditation spell I'm using now, but you need this tower to use it. Um, yes, and then I'll save the world and give you, you know, a sack of my uh, anti bone spray. Yeah. Teach you how to make these little wicker guys and shake your head a little bit. <laughs> okay, that all sounds fair. Um, if we leave you our friends, are you going to harm them? It looks towards uh, Rouge Lombardo. As long as they allow my wickers to carry out their experiments and leave me in the meditation room at the top of the tower, we should be fine. Okay, sounds good. Um, how close are we? To the top of the tower. One, two, three, four. There are nine more floors. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is a state tower. Um, and there's no danger between here and there aside from the bonus scouts. Become this warrior queen if you don't play your cards right. And I don't know. I really, I only use the steps to get up to the top room. I can see through the eyes of my wickers and, you know, Steer clear of the giant blender in the brass kitchen and that sort of thing. So. From up the stairs, you hear, bang, bang, bang! And I'm mine, false alarm! <laughs> I thought you said the queen, the royal queen wasn't here, she was in some time. She could be in it, she could appear. She could appear at any time. She's, she's definitely in this place, but she is in any time. Gotcha. Okay. She can't leave this place, but she can go anywhere. Okay. All right, oh. well, Hasley, it was lovely meeting you. Um, hopefully we'll be talking again soon, uh, but for the moment, we need to just check out this tower so we can get rid of these three freeloaders, I think they're freeloaders, <laughs> but <laughs> let's be honest, they're not that much help, and so, do you mind, we're just, I'm going to leave you here, we're just going to go check. Very good. I'll tell my wickers to, uh, give you a wide berth. The you know, you know what I mean? What this you... this little droid that's covering your head. Oh, El e. L. Speed Ray. Uh, he's, he's a wicker? No, he's he's, he's yeah. a vom. Um, oh, the mother root is speaking through the wicker that's attached to his head. Plus, there's a mother root beneath the tower. Yeah. There's a mage at the top of the tower, yeah. and the two are kind of in opposition. And you're no, speaking to the mage at the top. The, oh. Yeah. Oh. The, it's like the roots at the bottom are metal machine roots, and this is just like an earthy earth root. And that's oh. the lady at the top. And who was he talking to? Her. Her lady Through top. this little worker. Who was, you... Wasn't that the same one attacking him? Yeah. Yeah. But he the shot root? it first. Yeah. Or not that he was another. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you were communicating what with this root. we weave? And your butler thought it was attacking you and fireballed it, right? That's the situation. Oh. Well, so that one started as a communication and ended in violence. This one started in violence as a communication. <laughs> okay. I thought, I thought there were sides of the first move, right? It's the same direction. I'm a cannibal <laughs> roots here the whole time. That's, like how, <laughs> that's, how, that, that's how historians go. <laughs> and while well, this communication is going on, loyalty is about seeking violence. You, yeah. When you kicked open this door, you found someone else seeking violence. I don't want to oh, deprive yeah. you of that. Excellent. Uh, there's... <laughs> 
This but is if, if the timing works out for the fight to like stumble back into the talk <laughs> and mess it all up. These clearly, this is where the jellyfish porcupines are meant to go out of, like fly my pretties. There's uh, anvil there to uh, made out of star iron, like meteorite. There's a stationary laser, so it's like an upkeep place for the porcupines. But also there, trying to use the anvil in the laser, is a fellow in pangolin armor uh, repairing a, a gun of some kind, and he also has a big like net on his back, and he's got a like a centurion helmet. He looks over his shoulder, and as you approach, he turns and points a pistol at you. Oh, yeah, at the same, yeah, at the same moment, they're both just. Now hold on, loyalty spins on his porcelain heel and gets the draw. Yes, definitely. And then sees him going for his gun and just like raises the eyebrows, like, uh-huh. <laughs> Lucky my net gun's out of commission. <laughs> Pretty quick, sir. You ever considered working for Bruce Lombardo? <laughs> <laughs> not before just not before right now, but I'm open to it. I'll work for anyone if the pay's high enough. What's this barbarian queen paying you anyway? I'm not working for the barbarian queen. I'm working for the Emer I'm working for the Emerald one of the uh, Cogflower Church. There's a rogue magician here. Hessel. Oh. I'm supposed to bring her in dead or alive. Who? What are they paying for Hessel and Dead or Alive? 3d6 times 100. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's actually pretty good. 1300. That's chump change, my friend. Hmm? Rouge has a deed to this tower and gave us permission to loot it. Have you seen what kind of great stuff's in here? Hell, no, that very crystal and anvil is worth more than 1300. <laughs> so, uh, that and you've got looting rights. Has he got a deed? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it in his head. Nice. That's convincing. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I've taken out this contract. I think it'll be a really bad review if I don't bring it back in. You'll see it. Oh, yeah. Try. She's Loyalty, like, time. looks down at the tracking badge. <laughs> What's going wag? You know, the debts we carry, the lives we live. But think of all the money we could make right now. And loyalty spins the porcelain pistol, holsters, holsters it, and offers a hand. Friend. Or oh, no. <laughs> loyalty Dorian 17. <laughs> you a hex ad. Indeed. <sighs> Should have known. <laughs> it's Belly Hunter is happy to work with you to claim this time. <laughs> <laughs> this is Hell yeah. I promise this will be the one time where he doesn't resort to violence. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I know we're breaking a comedic streak. Yeah, that's all good. What was his name again? Uh, Oriano. Oriano. Thundercat? I'd like to pause it there for a bio break. That seems like a great commercial break moment. Break. <laughs> <sighs> this tower is so cool. Yeah! Someday I'll, someday I'll publish it. Wait, you made up all this? Yes. Oh, yeah. Thank you. This tower is really cool. Yeah! Who's got the deed? The Mecco roots or the bio the roots? roots. Yeah. yeah, the Mecco. In the Tower of Cutthus Amethyst. After making friends with Oriano. Mm -hmm. You see, this room is an armory. The door's already been kicked in. You been in there, Oriano? I took a peek. It's where I got this. He holds up a spear that has a crystal on the end that's going. There's a few more of these if you want. Oh, yeah, let's get kitted out. There are two more crystal keening spears and a gun rack in there. Gun racks. Of closed doors right now. What's up with the gun rack? Lucky that you can't be ambushed. It's a gun rack mimic! Yes! <laughs> as soon as you open it up, it uses its bullet breath attack. So. Uh -huh. <laughs> but loyalty moves faster. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh. Where are the bullets coming out of for the bullet breath? I feel like it's got the two doors on it and the guns, and as soon as you open it up, uh, 
I think a rhino is a really nice friend for those ten out. seconds you knew him. <laughs> Loyalty's gonna try. <laughs> to, real quick, unsurprised, <laughs> duck and weave and like roll under it and unload its guns before it can unload on him. You're shooting the cabinet? No, no, he's gonna unload its guns. Oh, I see. He's gonna like grab it and pull the pull the clips out of its guns on its back. Oh, yeah. The six the guns, clip. maybe. Awesome. Uh, roll to make it happen, Captain. <laughs> uh, yes, you do. No, you get shot. <laughs> Which is about time. I know. I keep waiting. Well, he's got a lot of life points to fill up with bullets. Let's go. No, it's a blue. He makes it. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> they come down and just okay, and they're partying their wonders. You hear a whimper you. from the gun rack. Rhino! Spear! Spear! Yeah. <laughs> he goes into spirit into submission and it just like wilts. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You have a uh Do I have mimic ammo that will fit any gun? <laughs> yes, that's what I was just gonna say. You've got sort of quantum ammo. <laughs> My bonus. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of extreme magic. Power. I'm almost out. I need some more ammo, but I got it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I swear to God, this is my last play. <laughs> <laughs> Like, it, it, it's, you always have enough, but you always have to, like, really pack it in there, really. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, maybe just one more, just one. <laughs> You're always... You always... That's a revolver with one bullet in it, always. <laughs> Damn it, you gotta reload it manually every single time. <laughs> like a crossbow in old school D&D. Y'all hear the cries of, Spear a rhino, spear! <laughs> yeah. Loyalty's voice coming from a, the door uh, on the other side of the room that you're in. Who the hell is Loyalty talking to? <laughs> Who the hell is a rhino? <laughs> Well, gosh, you right, you know. God, I hate this power. I'm leaving so bad. I can't. No, um, can you hear a, vo- a disembodied voice saying you're here? Okay. Come on, God. Anyone need Hold a spirit to is just the trap of the present. Such a nightmare. This is a goddamn nightmare for my guy. I'll take a spear. I'll take a spear. Yeah. There are two. So you got two of them. You give one away. Mm-hmm. So mark a crystal spear. Okay. And as a historian, you know that these uh, are ancient and no longer manufactured, and the crystals are carved in an. What, what do you call the way you carve a rock? Is that a, a pattern? Yeah. Yeah, pattern. Anyway, pattern. Yeah, Nobody yeah. knows how to do it anymore, and uh, they can harm incorporeal creatures like ghosts. Oh, okay. Normally, a sword can, but this crystal can. There was oh. two. We gave one away. How many hit points is it for? One injury, like everything in this in, yeah. in this system, does one it's injury. One injury, got yeah. it. But it can it can fire off on ghosts. Yeah. Yes, exactly. We, we have a, there was a second spear. Did it work with the? Uh... You want a spear? Oh yeah. Well, oh, here you go. Oh, I gotta yeah. Get Loyalty's already got a yeah. excellent ceramic mace. We don't need to. So yeah, just get to just put my crappy little stick spear off the side. Well, you already got a spear. I have a. Yeah, I have a flail and a spear, but you know, I mean, they don't use the crystal spear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got some reach with the spear. Well, now it's like you can have them in like that crystal cube thing. Seriously spear. contemplating. Yeah, I'm like, Seriously I'm contemplating doing accountancy magic to take the life from something else and give it back to the gun mimic and see if it'll come along as a mimic gun. But that takes like an hour of complicated earth man so we can't be interrupted. Really so can wait for now. Yeah. That Not was to a mention great spell to use in a, dun- in a dungeon that's full yeah. of possible things. Yeah, we're going to wait on that for a little bit. <laughs> um, Loyalty will well, go okay. around tapping the walls to see if there's any <laughs> any, any excellent hidden stashes in the armory. Excellent. We'll spend some time to do that. Time passes. Christoph ominously rolls a die. And you're sure there's no hidden uh, cash in this room. So did everyone get a spear that wanted one? <laughs> yes. Oh, I've got Three one, says the, uh, the scale armored... 
Ryan helmet now he's now joined your party. Hey friends, this is Orion Uh they work with us now. I heard that you've got looting rights in your contract, is that right? Ramba says. Well, I think we should that we should split uh, whatever we find at the end of this. But you know, evenly among the, the two parties. Yeah. Your party and ours. That's uh, the bodyguard for yeah. Rouge. Oh. The one competent person on their team. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, even split, I guess. I don't know. What do you guys think? After it <laughs> I'm sure. He owes us. Right. Right. So you replenish all the supplies that you use. And fifteen hundred and three sacks of porcelain sanguines. I don't know. His mages couldn't open the door. I had to open yeah. the door. He got sick instantly, yeah. and like I don't know how much help. He's frail. <laughs> Ram we're we're doing all the work. <laughs> I think she's got a point. We're doing all the work here. Deal if we get to keep that boring crate. The wooden crate? Wasn't much in there anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so fifty-fifty, and then you also get the crate. You get the crate. Yeah, okay. the crate full of stuff. 50-50 after expenses. The 1500 <coughs> and the three sacks, yes. And then we'll keep the crate. That's all. Wait, wait, wait. And, 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 and. I would, Chad wants to step in. Hey, <laughs> man, the, the guy's got a lot of money. Chad! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, man. Wait a minute, what's in the crate? <laughs> it's valuable. That's all I heard. What's in the crate? What's in the crate? I want to see what's in the crate before we make this deal. Chad, you're out. <laughs> you're cut, man. Finally, we did it all. Why? I'm just trying to. Have you met my crap? Chad really mixes it up. Have you met my crap? Uh, <laughs> caster, do your thing. All right, caster. all right, I'll get the crate. <laughs> Hold tight. Caster can't hire me. <laughs> such a brat. Hold tight for a minute, I'll get the crate. Right, right, Loyalty's gonna later. Okay, okay. Go, go, go down. with Ramba says. <laughs> she on the way down, Loyal's gonna be like, listen, Ramba. <laughs> What's Rouge paying you now? Uh oh. Uh, what would need to be in that crate for it to work for you? Rouge is my boyfriend. And then. Yep, yep. <laughs> she doesn't and then, love. Uh, from thin air appears disoriented Nemesis of Flow, the warrior queen uh, from the oh. <laughs> On the stairs as you're going down, maybe, you know, in this, in the library. Uh, on that on the she, ground floor? <laughs> no, like kind of on the way. I was going to say, get him, electro, electro roots. <laughs> get her. Uh, it's a leather war skirt. She's got Don't a shot from uh, Don't shoot. and the rod with the euro symbol on it. Uh, and she sees all of you and says, Wait, what are you them. Yes, you two. So you and Warriors, what is the meaning of this? Is the tower under attack? We roll a reaction. Well, let's or are you intruders? She drops down. Let everything go well. Yeah. We are only intruders. And loyalty pulls out the dream crystal into the world of dreams. <laughs> <laughs> looks her in the eye. She looks quizzically at this. All right. So a tyrant war queen has been trapped for God knows how long by treacherous chronomancers in time. Uh, and <laughs> as a magic rod of financial supremacy. What was her last dream, Joe? Uh, <laughs> her last dream. Her last dream. She was dreaming that she was trapped inside a, a tree, an old tree. And it was called the Astro. Astro. She chose to be in this tree. Because she had been disbanded from her family and was wandering lost looking for protection. And this particular tree was called an ash gum tree. And it had it was named so because of the sap that grew on the outside it was very resinous and very stinky. 
She slithered, slithered away inside of this tree, knowing it was going to provide her the solitude that she needed to live throughout time. And so she sat there and she watched people pass. There were tribes in the early beginnings. The valley was lush, fertile. A fire came through, burned everything down. This was many years later. The tree survived. The scars were still there. She sat there and watched as the city sprung up over across the horizon. And soon smoke filled the valley that she was in. And then one day the city collapsed. Eons kept passing. People were tribal again. People would come into the valley. No one would touch your trees. They knew as soon as you got the stuff on you. Like you were basically, if you've ever had like pine tar, but times a thousand. You know, your fingers stick together, it sticks on your shirt, it's annoying, you know, it just like it looks terrible. <laughs> Pretty soon there wasn't anybody, at least anybody that she had recognized. Nobody that we would call like a human. And then you could start to hear them, like the little spurtle like, on the ground, like needles, you know, these little bugs. But they obviously weren't bugs. They were machines. Um, Kept skirting around, skirting around on the ground. And there was one, and there was a thousand. And they formed these big globules that just hung off of, you know, anything that they could find. Rocks, you know, old trees that died long after hers. So nobody would touch her tree. By now it had spread out, so the roots would like, there were boulders and logs and things sticking out from the gaps. The roots extended way up above ground, you know, because they had long hit the bedrock. And this tree had been there longer than anybody really even remembered. And it just kept pushing up and all that. The trunk was tiny, almost looked like the world's worst corset. <laughs> you know, this little cinch in the middle is like all these uh, branches came extending off and she just sat in the center and watched. Peaceful, yes, no one can get, but also lonely. Because again, no one can get to her. And now there was no one to get to her at all. And then one day, <laughs> you asked her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, seeing the stream, loyalty's going in there. Yeah. yeah. Nice. <laughs> loyalty's entering the stream and it's going to embrace the sticky staff tree and go into. Um, but try to find the warrior queen's heart. Oh, yeah. <gasps> She's got to be a young version of herself. Or maybe yeah, you first go in and there is a yeah. teenage, uh, fierce queen, you know, standing guard there, who angrily asks who you are. Whoa! Loyalty. Quick draws the pistol and then slowly lowers it. A warrior. Hexad. Who are you? I am the warrior queen of past, present, and future. I've heard of you, and that you might be. You're the sworn enemy of the Vomes, right? Vomes? Vile's creations, the war robots? Yeah, that. Uses. <laughs> no. Someone else is the sworn enemy of the Vomes. That's a that's right. You're just a warrior. True of heart. Yes. Killing those who stand in your way. Yes. You aren't even involved in that. No. I am the provider of the people's meat market. I am the great queen of past, present, and future, and all bow before me. Fear me. Tremble. Respect. Yeah. <laughs> the richest of all leaders. My larders always flow. Loyalty, bows in respect, and then stands and meets the queen's eyes and says, uh, never in my travels have I met such an impressive war queen. I am at your service, my lady. Anything that I or my family can do. You hear sobs, a child's crying from a room behind a door behind her in this sort of circular hollow tree trunk chamber. Mm -hmm. 
and she stiffens. Is that the younger you? No, she Who says. <laughs> no, it is not of your concern. <laughs> we need that tapestry therapist. Yeah, no. exactly. <laughs> but perhaps it's of yours. The door creaks open and you see a little girl peek out. Or your queen, if I may. And now within the dream, loyalty pulls out the dream crystal. And oh. holds it at the appropriate angle oh, between the warrior God. queen and the little girl. <laughs> Perhaps if you were to look through the crystal into her eyes, you would see that um, you need not be separated by this door. <laughs> looks into the crystal. And then you in real life return to having lost eye contact with the queen, uh -huh. who now eyes rolled back in her head, standing in the middle of the room, tears streaming down her face. And you're broken. <laughs> yeah. Um. Ram and Tam has gone to flank behind her with the uh, <laughs> red. Um, Loyalty's going to disarm the warrior queen. And then... Um, is she holding that little... Uh, she has a Xena circle and the time rod, yes. Right. Yes, yeah, so we're, we're taking her weapons. And then, chill, Ramba. Don't stab her yet. Of course. And wait for her to process what she's got to process and start to come out of it. <laughs> then stab her. <laughs> <laughs> we all know. We're playing a deeper game here. <laughs> but she's a when she starts to come out of the game, or out of the, out of the story, the, the dream, um, Loyalty is going to greet her with Warrior Queen. You've been disarmed, but not outdone. Your true power returns to you now, and give her back her weapons. What is the meaning of this, Random says? <laughs> I mean, respect for the greatest warrior, Ramba. Convinced. <laughs> so, what's that box with treasure in it when the warrior queen stands before us? She has a pretty great thing here. She told people that water, <laughs> not to get addicted to water. I thought that was pretty clever. <laughs> your Majesty, I hope that you've conquered your inner demons. You were in my dream. Yeah. <laughs> Was it I in your dreams for your queen? <laughs> Be quiet. <laughs> I'm coming down the spiral staircase. <laughs> and if you don't mind me saying so. Chad. <laughs> Chad. Spends your breath. <laughs> If you don't mind me saying so, Your Majesty, I was entirely impressed with what I saw. And, you know, if I could ever come and visit this tower and just hang out, I'd like that. You would be welcome. Thanks. And <laughs> loyalty is going to go for a really heartfelt fist bump. <laughs> <laughs> really? Meaningful. She, she is unfamiliar with this motion, but she flexes and punches her oh, hand as hard as she can. Hard as can. <laughs> yes. That. That is how you greet someone. <laughs> we all have to come back down this way. It's going to be really painful greeting. <laughs> Some broken you. knuckles. <laughs> It's a good time to Oh, good for you. Yeah. Some of us have been drained magically by our own butlers. <laughs> she uh, puts a hand on her heart and looks over and goes over and takes out one of her books and goes to read it. And she says, yes, you're welcome. You're welcome to stay here as subjects of mine. In fact, 
sort of, sort of holds the book thusly and takes her rod that you rearmed her with. Mm -hmm. And uh, she says, you shall be a member of my court. The Dream Walker. What is your name? Loyalty Dorian 17. Loyalty Dorian 17, Dream Walker of the Timeless Court. She unites you. <laughs> Ramba nods impressively. And you, she says. <laughs> I didn't do it. What's up? Uh, you come seeking What's water, up? we have plenty. <laughs> sure. You any vegan food? What is vegan food? I should take you to the kitchen, regale me with the meat in your pits. <laughs> you know. Should have done the old, how you doing? <laughs> you mainly, you mainly made food. No animal products. Made of no. humans? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> For a monthly blood meal. <laughs> which I take of sex. Um, no, nah, I don't need that. It's all good. Let's see what we have. <laughs> the, cook, the chef wizards might have, might have left something palatable to you. You go up, there's a floor here where you have to climb a rope ladder, and she looks around and says, Damn. Rattle catapults who climbs up the rope ladder, <laughs> takes you past a few more rooms into a brass kitchen, and she takes a key ring off, which goes in there. There's a giant blender. There is a tile stove made of muscle and china. Uh, and then she goes into a little shelf that has cookbooks on it, and she takes out, I guess I could make uh, almond bark or a twill. She holds up these two scrolls, magic scrolls. One is the spell Almond Bark Skin, and one is Create Tweel. Do you have a sweet tooth? It's, I think a tweel is just a pure, sugary... Uh, Can your butler with the domestic magic up and whip something up? I don't know, man. I'm having, I'm having a whole existential crisis with him right now. So. <laughs> She goes through the cupboards. Mostly what she can make is sweets, so fig pies and this sort of thing. Uh -huh. mm. I see. She's going to spell lift a meal cake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's like water is addictive. <laughs> <laughs> but sugar, we have plenty. Yeah, exactly. What's up? Uh, well, if she's like. Anyway. She seems to be best in fattening people up, you know what I mean? Uh, For the blood boom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As previously feel. mentioned. What's that? Spell tweel. Oh, T U I L L E. T U I L. -L -E. I think it's a sugary decoration sort of thing. Yeah. It's a big wafer. Unfortunately, my chef mages have abandoned me or died. I haven't let myself think of what really happened, but after talking to my inner child, I think I have to face the facts that I was trapped here and abandoned by the mages that I abused. For centuries. Ah, <laughs> uh, I'm good. I try not to eat sugar, so. <laughs> I'll hold out a little longer. I'm sure I'll be okay. Oh. Very well. Close the door. Go back down the road. Like everyone else. Um, you were heading down after um. Boyle is really soul. hoping that Ramba got distracted and forgot about the box. <laughs> That's, well, that was well, her magic plan. Oh, well, <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> no. No, Ramba's mind's on the cash. Yeah. All right, now that that distraction is <laughs> What's in the box? You continue descending. You know, really valuable stuff. I guess we should keep proper books. Yes. I think we should split it fair and square between our two parties. Yeah. I didn't come all the way out here for the past few months, nearly die in a crater mm -hmm. full of broken pots just to end up absolutely destitute in an ancient tower haunted by apparently three different <laughs> factions. You know what? Let's like four to count your pots. <laughs> <laughs> Let's write, let's write up a ledger. I love him. Let's write up a ledger of the loot. 
and make sure it's divided fair and square. After expenses. After expenses. <laughs> God Steno smiles upon you. God Steno also favors loyalty. <laughs> loyalty is an expert in accountancy. And we'll make sure that you get that right. And the 15, everything else that was promised, expenses and those. Nice. Yeah. All right. Having settled that issue no, and... said the looting rights were hours and hours alone. Right? That's what the Duke said. Yeah, don't, don't worry about it. Loyalty's going to get a ledger filled out right. where everything comes out fair and square at the end. <laughs> and we walk away with the great full of loot. It was a I, fine. You're dealing I, with a hex hand, the countermancer here. I see, what, yeah, I don't know, okay. Rampa doesn't see, but Kristoff sees what kind of ledger you're talking about. <laughs> oh, uh, I should have known. <laughs> Great. Loyalty is an ordained priest of Stano. <laughs> and an adjuster from the neighborhood watch. He knows how to do this. <laughs> <laughs> you dream walk around the realm of timelessness. Yeah, it's a night Sir, loyalty. <laughs> Got you, Samethyst, uh, after your brief visit to the, <laughs> the cupboard, comes back here and sits on the aforementioned throne to read a book from her childhood. And when she does, it goes... <laughs> she lets him into the cushion and grit. She shakes her fist <laughs> and falls to her knees. Oh, what? <laughs> <Surprise>? <laughs> yes. Um, so while she's going through that, what do you all do? <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna keep looting. <laughs> <laughs> can we yeah, can we get back can we get back to the treasure? <laughs> I just compul I have a compulsion. Oh. The next floor you go up is the one that's all clear that the floor, air. Right? Yep, that floor's all clear. You got everything there. This one's open to the air. Oh, is it the one with the little stick? Yeah. Congrats, okay. gang. That stick it a is a third, third of the way to the top. Oh, okay. The brass kitchen is just ahead. It's made of stone on the inside, like a castle, you know, like a medieval castle, a different style than a lot of what's here. Crumbly walls, crumbly furniture, wind going uh, through. To, uh, see if it's super windy. One. Um, and there are echoes of gossiping voices. Um, I just got that spear. <laughs> <laughs> One of those spears are ready. You got it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, we hear whispery voices? Yes. Any boxes or chests? This room's destitute. It's open to the air and probably people have climbed up and gotten stuff out of it. Just whispery voices, um, talking mm -hmm. about something. This is a, a chasm sort of... Yeah. Well, I would so climb I could push them what to their depths. <laughs> you, you, know what, you know what it's for. <laughs> you know what it's for, yes. <laughs> Anything, any kind of danger coming from the whisper, whispers? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> they speak uh, in hushed and fearful tones. Uh, they worry about the machine humans. And it's the current theme of this world. Where's that bones on the mind? <laughs> bones on the mind. I think that's a song. Roll me one of those sweet, sweet dice. Which one? <laughs> Let me tell you. Let's I figure six. it out. A six. Actually, make it a d12 if you would. Sorry. Okay. Six! Wow. <laughs> it's meant to be. They say, uh, the lings. And you know that the Lings are, of course, the uh, long-ago uh, ancestors of the Halflings. The Lings, the Viles, they were only a myth. The Demi-Urges, they brought humans to the Earth. Robots, 
made of meat to serve the creators. And they departed. Their programming went bad. And they destroyed the planet. That is when the machine humans came to clean things up and become the true tyrants. Kachu has no idea. She is but a pawn in a bigger game. That's the sort of thing they're whispering about. Yeah, she's I'll whisper back. Who's got you? Assume tight. <laughs> was Kachu the name of the time lady? We just... Kachu is the queen of this tower. As no, you no. speak to them, you start to see ethereal forms of oh. people drinking at tables, big yeah. flagons of ale, holograms. She has brought her tower into this age, thinking that she can rule here. But she has no chance to compete with the ultimate, the ultimate tyrants, the machine humans. So who made it with the wings to make halflings? Or halflings and half what? What do you mean halflings? <laughs> there, there never, there never were any lings. The lings are only a myth. That's what you just said. <laughs> okay, uh, what's that the was legend? a sidebar. <laughs> that was a sidebar for me. They're from so far back in time that they don't know about the halflings. No, no, no. The lings are only a myth. If anybody tells you that the lings or the vials or the elves or whatever you call them are here, that's only a, okay, a, bad, a, a bad myth cast by the human okay, being. Sure, whatever. Next, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go upstairs. Was that getting further? She really <laughs> start to Please. fade away and out. Do you want some invisible people? <laughs> All right. That's the Is any of that lore important? She was from the. I guess we'll find out. So, the inference there was that she was from the group of humans before the uh, bones appeared, like before, like the mechanics, mechanical ones appeared. Yeah, I want to say about the machine humans, they're a, a new too. group we haven't really heard about yet. They're legendary sapiens who managed to combine personality and soul with bodies built from the dust of the earth. There's discussion among the sages as to whether they were even possible, with blood sages particularly opposed to the idea of bloodless humans. So they weren't mechanical at all, just bio. No. Some kind of, they're, they're from back in an age of legend, like, you know, when, the, when you read Ovid or Homer, and they're talking about like their great legendary ancestors, like it's so far back that it's hard for us to even imagine. But there were these machine humans who gave rise to these bloodless beings. And the people in here, whatever time they're from, were gossiping about how those machine humans ruled in that age. And how the stories of the elves, like before the elves left the other world, and the vials and the lings, the strange space creatures are all just uh, myths to cover up the truth of the machine who knows. I created everything. And the tower is not of this world. So they brought the tower here to keep my healthy time up. We'll see if that has any wings. It has any feet. That's it. It's basically just a crumbly stone room full of whispers. Nice. Let's <laughs> get the hell out of here. love God. I can't express to you how much I don't want to be in this tower. This tower where it talks to me about things like freedom, and then people ask me to choose between choices. Uh, it's... Oh. Rope ladder in this ruined room. Is that a smaller room? They should all be the same size, oh, okay. but uh, my printer paper ones. <laughs> <laughs> in this, it seems like two rooms, but you know, it got destroyed. So you come to into this little waiting room that's just really dusty and wind scorched. Uh, there's a, a, a map of the region on the wall, an old map, and a bunch of debris. And then across this gap, if you could jump over there, you see there's a bunch of uh, murals on the wall and posters of Kachi Samethyst slaying mythagogical tyrants and machine human soldiers. Um, and then there's a bunch Do of... any of those figures move? No. Is there anything good on the map? I'll tell you to go to Yeah, we'll take that map if we need it. Do we need the map? Do we actually have this map, or is this just for player reference? You actually have this physical map. Okay. But this is a zoomed-in map at this region. 
Legion for uh, no. nomads. Yes, there are good things on it. Well, right. A die, of course, must be rolled to determine what they are. What one? Lester roll, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. A six sided die. Six. Nice. Oh. I can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Did you get those from a casino? I don't know! <laughs> there were, this did not happen last week. Wow. Pull two of them together and see if they like. <laughs> exactly. I was like, uh. See? Yeah, I read it. Nah, you good, man. We need some wins. So, on the map, the there most two. interesting thing is. <laughs> A little, you know, line pointing and then a pop out zoomed in image of some uh, tourist attraction, which is deep underground, a limestone karst, giant spherical cavern, 300 meters, um, left by uh, the accidental detonation of an ancient combat ritual and full of, you know, when people go in like, heavy water, muddy lakes, and they say it's good for your bones because it's got a lot of that kind of material in it. It's like soupy water like that that's like really healthy and healing. Mineral bath. Mineral bath. Let's just say mineral bath. It's deep under, deep underground. That's a discovery, and that reminds me. Discoveries, these things that you've been kindly marking that move yeah. off of main areas, you get experience points for each one that you visit. And I owe you all for when you visited the glass house. Right. Uh, so just not you. Everybody else. <laughs> One hundred. You, Mr. Tattletail on the brain. <laughs> that was a great first. No, no, I love that. One hundred sixty experience points for when you visited the glass house. One hundred sixty. Okay. Yep. So every time you visit one of these places that's off the map, you get a, just a chunk of experience points for doing that. And I owe you some for visiting this tower, which I will give you now. So one sixty. And 60, and I gotta look up how much the talents weight. Be faster if I use that screen. Alright, well, watch your eyes. Watch your eyes. Everyone, watch eyes. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Is this discovery? <laughs> you just said 160, right? Yes. Yep. yep. Give me a page to look on that one. <laughs> Thank you. It's 225. Remember, you have your glasses back there? No, they're right there. Oh, yeah, my shades. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make it similar. I'll just give us 5,000. 5,000 experience. <laughs> oh, that was so cool. That was so close. <clears throat> I think I did one more Make off with that crate full of flowers and find a couple of weeks in town. That's about 5,000 experience each. Mm. Wait, can we sell things for experience? Maybe you sell things and then make money to the party for lots of experience. Right. Oh, almost. I did not get a lot of experience for the lane partying I did in the last time. Your party sucked. <laughs> um, it really did. I got roped into some stupid revolution. Yeah. <laughs> and got a, you got a chore for your yeah. party. <laughs> I barely remember mine, but I know. Well, you, got, you got roped into the revolution too, right? I don't think so, because mm -hmm. I slept and then made a mom. So. All right. No one else got so Loyalty was at a revolutionary meeting but didn't follow what was going on enough to get involved. Again, I don't remember what happened. It's just kind of dense <laughs> about politics. In a pond. <laughs> I just remember and that you're, you got a name called Gelato Disguise. Yeah. Or guys. Yeah. Gelato yeah. Guys yeah. that smell uh, like disguise. 200 experience points. 200 for coming to this tower. 200? Yeah. yeah. And that you get to draw. What, what do you, what do you write that? Those oh, things. Oh, man. What mm -hmm. well, can I do to get yeah. 20 experience points uh, real quick? You have an old version of the sheet. I'll uh, get you a current one someday. It should uh, be level slash XP. Gosh, well, that's the only change. 
Yeah. <laughs> 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 you're at level zero. Once you get to 300, you'll be level one. Oh, okay. Wouldn't it be nice? All right. Uh, thanks for that diversion. This room, in addition to those posters, got that map that showed you that discovery of the limestone karst. Across there, you see posters. You also see bit book bins full of uh, tricolor little booklets of some kind. I love those. Yeah. yeah. You'll have to leap or find a way to get across here to actually get at them, because you like come to over here. Oh, there's a spiral staircase, staircase, staircase in the middle? No spiral staircase. This one, you have to take a rope Real ladder. ladder. Oh, I got this. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to tie uh, some strands of my unbreakable silver thread together. Okay. Double uni knot, so it's really strong. You got and it. And then around caster. And I'm gonna chuck him into the bin. Caster's gonna grab a couple, and I'm gonna wheel him back. Hi. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. There are. What is the sensitive part of a tricolor booklet? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Is that all he does? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm making a guess. Don't limit him. It's, it's more than that. It's agitating propaganda. It denigrates various areas from across the swath of land you're familiar with and other areas you're not familiar with. Oh, uh, saying really... nuts to those and inviting people to come to the quote, needle of economic supremacy, promising meat, clean water, protection, and arms for freedom fighters. Translations are in every known language and some future languages. So I obviously find this all very interesting. Mm -hmm. One, I speak all these languages. But two, you know, this is a part of the history that I was unfamiliar with so many people. Excellent. That's one. Could you, slot. Could you page anything about the Force and Princes in there for me? <laughs> one slot it takes? Or what we. Yeah. Yeah. One slot. Yep, one slot. And let's. You've reminded me, Porcelain Princess makes me think. You've got a skill written down for history, right? Me? Yeah. Or... No, I'm a polyglot. Wherever you have history on your sheet, maybe near the top that you're a folk historian. I am a historian, yes. Put my... four little check boxes by it and fill one of them in, it's since actually... you found this agitprop. If you can fill in all four, then that your level of historianism will get better. Oh, good. Yeah. Anything bad melding the... Uh... Uh, what is it called? The Vampire Land? Yes, the Redlands. There's a. Uh, oh no, I've got it somewhere, somehow. They uh, throw some shade onto the king of the vampires. Casuccio. Do you want to roll a d6 to know if <laughs> you're the vampire prince? Four, Ooh. five, six, then yes. Four, five, six. Oh my goodness. Six! Your father! The king of all vampires. He lied to me. He said he was a farmer. Yes. Wow. This is a, this is a power of, you know, future and past. It could be at any point in uh, time. Well, maybe he becomes king later. Yeah. He had humble beginnings. Like Conan and the Lover. The Gumes are the basis of heroes. All right. All right. And then there's this area here. If you kick in that door. There's nothing more than an agit prop in uh, the book bins. Oh wait a minute! So it was it's throwing shade on my uh, my lands? Yeah, it's saying if that's, you that's a bunch of bullshit. That one. <laughs> got a little flyer. It's propaganda nonsense. <laughs> if you live in the gross, squishy, I'm trying to think of like what's a mean thing you can say about somebody is mud blushing. Yeah. <laughs> Lagoon infested. <laughs> Lagoon infested. Blood veins. Come, come somewhere dry where li <laughs> where liberty is in the air. Yeah. A lot of stuff that just doesn't jive with what you know about how Kathy actually ran things. I mean, to be fair, my a lot of tyrants in my homeland. We're <laughs> <laughs> not really a democracy. <laughs> Far from it, dude. Um, are people wanting to check out the next room or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so one more. It's nine forty. I get one more room, and then I got one more room. And then I got it. Rock and roll. Is this the top one? One, two, three, four, five, six. There's twelve or thirteen, I think. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, yeah, there's the nine. 
Nine more than four. Okay. <laughs> nine left. I was with. It's a tall boy. I thought there was nine. Oh. I'm like, man, this is. I'm digging this tower. I'm down for this sketchy tower. There's no elevator. Okay. Yeah. There's yeah. no elevator. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. You've been to the future and you don't have an elevator. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> you find one on the back on the outside. Yeah, exactly. Where you get to the top, it's like this lift is banging all the time. Last room possibly for tonight is you kick open this door and these three uh, little squares are three salon chairs. This room half it comes down and there's you know mirrors and sinks and shampoos in front of it's a salon. Uh, and there's one overturned hair dryer and inside there are three or no four rats scampering and playing with each other. Uh, and there's a little hole in the wall. Panel rats. They're uh, we got totally, magic for this. Oh, yeah, totally biological. We got magic for this. I do, yeah. Elroy's yeah. got spells. Yeah. For rats. Really? But they have like mm -hmm. snake, you know, venomous snake. Oh, they're snake rats. <laughs> we can milk them and prevent that. <laughs> Ooh, you could prevent the snake milk. Yeah. You have the a rat venom. Skill too? No, we got a spell. Elroy has a spell oh. to prevent. Oh. Oh. Well, they look up at you and hiss. <laughs> There. So apparently, it just rats turns into uh, clams. I have rats to clams, rat, oh, oh, ferment rat, rat milk. Mm -hmm. And you're saying ferment. I'm saying if you milk, if you milk their venom, maybe you can ferment that and make something with a real kick. That'd be interesting. I. We can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not opposed. I, do, do we got anything to capture these rats? Who's got fingproof fingers? <laughs> Oh, yeah. uh, probably brick person. Yeah. On the on the scale of like about to attack you to totally neutral, not sure. They're right in the middle, so they're right constant down. kind of feeling. You don't speak rat. Did you find any food? <laughs> I thought the cherries. Did we pack up the cherries? Blackberries, but you took those out to the worm. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Loyalty is gonna pour out a bottle of. Fudge Voce on the floor and see if we can get these rats drunk. Nice. If you give them some distance, they will approach. And back off and let them lap there up the delicious honey grass liquor. Someone roll a 2d6, please, and add them together for me. As they're drinking up the liquor, something happens. You got what? Four and three? Seven. Sweet. Classic. <laughs> All right. Nothing to write home about. Well, I'm so excited. <laughs> Why are you rolling those seven um, of the wicker root fetishes that you've already met come down uh, the staircase and just, uh, they're kind of like sitting along the stairs and like looking through the little posts at you and they're just watching you. Yeah. Yep. And they're kind of tailing you. Uh, the rats drink and then, we'll give you plus two to that. <laughs> Five. They're <laughs> slightly less, yeah, slightly <laughs> less hostile than they were before, but still uh, hackles up. Suspicious of you. After all the liquor is gone, they go back into the the overturned hair dryer and <laughs> like sniff. So I do have brick. I am made out of brick. So can I approach cautiously, like, hey, little guys, how you doing? Like, it's good little. <laughs> Careful, the guys up top. Right. Spitting acid. And I get closer and I get closer. Yeah. And I do the thing where, you know, so they can smell my hands. Yes. One of them tries to bite me. Yes. Breaks a fang. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's roll a d6 on that. Four, five, six, it breaks its same thing. One, two, three, it gets two. you. So it actually hits you with some venom. Oh, oh the brick. Dang. Which uh, gives you a fatigue that takes up one of your inventory slots. Well, actually, Yes, it does. No, it doesn't? Yes, it does. Yes. It either takes one life or gives you that fatigue on your inventory slot. Your choice. Um, you want that healing potion back? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, we can call it even. <laughs> I gotta go. Uh, I would have to drop something, right? Wait, cause I'm no, gonna, if you uh, have empty space. Oh, I got, I'll yeah. take it. Oh, you got plenty? I'll take it. What's your ha? Huh? Three. Okay, you're good. Um... How do you react when it bites through and, and harms you? Ah, I was I'm a little surprised. First of all, I run over at Gaster, grab it, pull it out. Because, you know, 
He's got, he's very active. <laughs> yeah. He's not aggressive, but, but. Yeah, exactly. Like, if you ever have a celebrity, you want this crap. I'm thinking of the moment in, is it Princess Mononoke? She, like, there's a worried creature and she goes to comfort it and it bites her, but she just, like, stays cool. <laughs> no. Uh, mushroom. Spores. Future. Ohms. Nausicaa in the Valley of the Wind. Anyway, another <laughs> another morale roll. <laughs> they just piss. They're not happy rats. Yeah, they are, like you said, angry drunks. So yeah. they bite you and you stay there and they, they continue to cower. Yeah, further. I'm giving up on these. Yeah. Uh, I'm bailing. My, my hand is swollen. <laughs> I can't move. This at tower all. makes it hard to be a good citizen no matter who you are. Yeah, and when you're a very place, it's really heavy. So, like, you know. It's just like dragging along. It's annoying. Chad, there's a salon here. It's been a while since I've had a fresh cut, <laughs> so I just want to sit in the chair and hope that some like a hairstylist comes out. Magic hair. Ghost gives me gives me a little hair. Come on, Roll time tower. Six. It's four, five, six. Of course, one does. <laughs> <laughs> so a hair. I'm not worried about the rats at all. <laughs> the rats will be. Uh, Held by my incredible breath. Anyway. A robot hairstylist comes out of the wall. <laughs> what would you like, sir? Give me the usual. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, uh, Kai, yeah. keeping in mind that this this needle has traveled through all every era, you know, all different times. What is the usual right now? <laughs> it's the one they gave him in the future. <sighs> <laughs> Have we seen the Warrior Queen's hairdo? Or has it just been helmeted the entire time? Uh, we've seen her hairdo. Okay. She's got, she doesn't wear a helmet. She's, oh, she's, she's too cool for that. Gosh, she's a I thought, yeah, sorry. I thought that was like some, sort of, <laughs> some reference. Yeah, because there was, was Orion O had a helmet. Yeah. No, I'm thinking of the Pharaoh esque. Like, what was Oh, the, yeah. She, that was the she does have that. The Nemesis. So, uh, you, don't, you know what her hair looks like from her dream when she was a young kid, anyway. No. Long black. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's, yeah. That's not a hairstyle. That's, they that's cut it to look hair. like they gel <laughs> a little, like, snake coming out of your front of your head. Oh, God. So funny. It would be funny if it was trying to mimic that sort of thing where it's strong widow's peak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like that, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, was it the Lawless movie where you had uh, the hair where you've got like the longer on the top, but they were, like they comb it back with them, like the shaved on the sides of the back. You know what I'm saying? Okay, yep, yep, yep. But it's highly emphasized where it's like it's highly stylized with that strong widow's peak because like, it is trying to imitate like the Warrior Queen awesome. at some point in time, <laughs> but it's meant for you know. One of the soldiers. Nice. <laughs> Widow's peak hair going back, super faded on the sides. I got faded. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Hold on. Buddy? I'm broke. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Wheels back into the wall and closes. Better luck next time. The and the the rats uh you know, as the rats in the foreground, the shot is on the floor. The rats are leaving the bucket and leaving all of you and going into their little hole in the wall. Sort of like, what the fuck is going on? Oh, let's get a final moment from each of you in this very climactic <laughs> salon. <laughs> Neil is looking at her foxtail and is like thinking, I've got the best stuff. <laughs> nice. okay. There you go. It's on now. <laughs> How about? Oh, I, you know what? I'm gonna take out one of my. Do we want these rats? <laughs> no. Nah. You know, if you're asking me, no. <laughs> All right. You can just do something sort of a cinematic <laughs> last. If you're last hungry for blood, blood and you want to go full whatever that guy's name is. <laughs> no, I'm gonna take out one of my blood beads and sort of offer it to the rats. Nice. As they're going, the two go ahead, and the last one sort of turns back and. No, no, I'm gonna roll. I'm not gonna go too close. I'm just. Yes. <laughs> it enjoys it. No, 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 no. Um, someone tried to get loyalty's attention. Hey, loyalty. Huh? <laughs> How was that? Huh? Oh, sorry. I was thinking about the warrior queen. 
Oh. Uh, oh. Good one. Good one. Oh, God. No, the Thok is... He's literally having an existential crisis. <laughs> People started talking about freedom and tried to explain that to him. And then he went outside because there was chronomancy and this therapeutic blanket man. And then there's these other people that tried to make him make a serious choice, which is not, is not, none of this, he feels like a very bad citizen right now. Oh. <laughs> this tower is making him feel like a poor, poor man. Over your shoulder, your butler's clearly reading your brain. Yeah. He turns, he turns to diligence, death, Mary, and whispers something in his shoulder. <laughs> they stare at you while they conspire. Yeah. I love that these two are yeah. <laughs> like the thieves. <laughs> <laughs> the the Grandma the monster and the butler. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, that weird dichotomy. The necro butler. This one is the first time where it's like, it's clearly like the butler's there to protect him as an interest of some sort, but like the first time where he like felt uncomfortable about it because it was like <laughs> the butler was saying things that wasn't necessarily true to the people he'd been working with so it was like well that's not how the, um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's a lot of things that he's having to just too much what is the truth <laughs> what's splash splash doing <gasps> oh god god there's still a little puddle of alcohol on the floor <laughs> oh <laughs> that's down. that splish splash right there <laughs> <laughs> the rat uh, with the fangs at Squish Flash and he just stands up and the rat runs away. <laughs> just... Oh, Stoner's looking through all the drawers to see if he can find it. Yeah, any. he's trying to score. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Any... Got some it's like a hairstyle they always come. There's one of those like things with the blue thing that the cones are in and he drinks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Finds a pocket full of hairpins, like, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Anything he can turn into a pipe. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alroy is a bit salty over his swollen and sore hand. Uh, <laughs> and is staring, like, begrudgingly at Chad, mad that he gave away half their loot, but yet <laughs> somehow can't deny that that haircut made it even more handsome. <laughs> <laughs> At the final moment, the camera, you know, circles in on Chad as our final. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> He's our fourth wall breaking character. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think we should be honest? <laughs> Everything else is allowed in this game. Why can't we have somebody who's like <laughs> And that's session three of Ultraviolet Grasslands. Woo. Find out at the next thing, same time, same channel. <sighs> so was there a bonus amount of XP for this outside of just the discovery? The XP. Figure that out. Yeah. For as far as end of session. I mean, so some of us are desperate for XP. <laughs> <laughs> Session progress toward a goal. 1d6 times 100. 400 experience points each. Oh. Yeah, Thank you. So, when you jump a level, you get one. What do you get? It's on the back in the lower left corner, but you can get one plus one to ha, or ka, or ba, or you can get one spell, or you can get one skill, or you can get a mutation. So you get um, one I will take. You can also up one of your skills from sort of its initial status as skilled to expert. I That's jumped a level, I'm going to take one bot. Uh, I have no bot. The gods no, love you bot. a little bit more. Yeah. You've proven you say, yourself to the god of rats. Yes. Oh, you say it's one bot or all those other things you were saying? Yeah. I'll have to decide that next time. Yeah. Hmm, Christoph, would it make sense to rate the Dreamwalker of the Timeless Fort title as a multiple item? Yeah. 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 Yeah.